Good evening and welcome to the Minions of the Zoo Saturday edition. I'm your host and keeper of the Harry Channel. And with me tonight are Minions Skeptok. Hi, everybody. Sora Luna. Hello. Dr. Functional. Woo! And uh, our guest tonight is not Jack Gunsky. Who am I? Who are you? I don't know. Who among us is Jack Gunsky? So you said you were watching. I am Jack Gunsky. <laughs> we're all. Oh, this I isn't, am Jack. This Gunsky. isn't like Spartacus. I am so, Jack so Jack, you were watching <laughs> Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. With, with friends. We're 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 into the Majin Buu saga, and for anyone who uh, is uh, familiar with Dragon Ball Z, it is the stupidest. Uh, <laughs> mm, cookie. It's the. St- stupidest thing i've ever seen well i think when you finish dragon ball z you should absolutely watch dragon ball gt because it's so much better and i know you're gonna really love it (laughs) that was sarcasm totally different yeah Yeah. no it is actually totally different it's really 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 bad it's so bad that most people who watch dragon ball pretend it didn't exist yeah that's how bad it is it's like a whole Mm. thing then they're like yeah that's not canon no, like, no, so, yeah, no. certain parts of Star Trek. Okay. Yeah. You, you know, Dra- Dragon Ball, the first series, was half decent. Dragon Ball Z is just, it yeah. starts eh, and then just gets worse. The, the original Dragon Ball was really the quintessential, like, hero's journey, you know, like, he's, he's, he's a small kid and he's learning about, you know, all sorts of different stuff and how to be a good person and all that. So that was, that was okay. You kind of got the same from the early, what, season and a half of Dragon Ball Z. But then it just goes off this cliff and everything just gets super wacky. And it's it, it, it goes right off the, the, the edge. The, the writers don't know when to stop having good ideas. <laughs> well, because it's it's just like um, the old uh, 80s, um, like G.I. Joe's Transformers things. They're made to sell toys. Right. So they have to keep it going because well, they have to the, that's their half. Else. Right. Yeah, that's their half-hour slot of a whole commercial. And yes. and honestly, can I just say, Kr- Krillin gets like the weirdest hand of all because he's functionally useless during the I mean, entire series. But a he wears the best clothes consistently uh-huh. of all the characters, and b he marries uh-huh. Android eighteen. Yeah, which if you like girls with severe haircuts. Um, Go Krillin, I guess. So there is, okay, there is this uh, this guy near the Good way to go. the place that I, I rent, the not great place in Silicon Valley, just so I don't have to drive back and forth all the time. And uh, he, he's, he drives this really shitty old uh, SUV thing that's badly tuned and makes a ton of noise. He fires that thing up, and the V8 <laughs> just rocks the whole neighborhood. It's just terrible. And it, everything smells of gas. And it's just such a piece of shit. But this guy looks like he's kind of dangerous and he's got a bald head. And uh, I've, I've, I've nicknamed him in my mind Evil Krillin because he's like if Krillin <laughs> was a delinquent. So yeah, this morning, you know, I was out going for a walk early in the morning before it got too warm. And, and there he was. I'm like, yeah, God damn, it's Evil Krillin again. Hate that guy. In a what stupid your, car. What was your high temperature today here? Um, not high enough to really care. It was like eighty, really? maybe ish. So eighty ish. Yeah. yeah, it was like one hundred and sixty eight here. One hundred and sixty eight. It was yeah. like Alderon hot. That's not not good. <laughs> it was like fucking one hundred and two. You know, and it's been that way for weeks. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's been. Uh, burning pretty terrible uh, we, we had to give up on the garden we we cannot keep enough water on it the, it just burned mm. up our garden we've got to we've got we're gonna have to go with sun mitigation if we're gonna get serious about it i'm dead serious oh, put the, i put believe you that, that you know cloth stuff yeah well here's the uh here's the climate prediction us. center let's see how much <clears> it sucks uh well that's six to eight, ten days sucks Eight to fourteen sucks. Yeah, there's really nothing here that's offering any relief. You should just nope. plan for it being terrible. Right. Yeah. One month sucks. Three months. Yeah. I mean, basically, if you're a scap, thank God it's for just re- terrible. Redundant air conditioning. Yeah. 
Yeah, this is all generally pretty awful. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I am the kind of person that keeps that bookmarked. Thank you very much. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, I, I have no a bookmark too, but it's for my job. <laughs> Good job, man. Uh, hi, functional. Hi. So, other than uh, home maintenance type stuff, uh, what's up with you? Uh, you know, something that's been in the news. That... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Shit. Um, that uh, you know we're gonna get to later. That's been piquing my interest is the uh, big writers SAG AFTRA mm. AFTRA AFTRA uh, AFTRA. Yeah. Well, Astra. AFTRA down there, AFTRA up here. Mm -hmm. Um, who oh. have been? Are we on strike? Know, I, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, buddy. Um, it's something I've been paying close attention to because it's something I've been a part of and something that interests me as a cinephile. Um, so yeah, I mean, paying a lot of attention to that. Can Can I just say, you know, we give the man a lot of of, of crap, but Adam Conover is the singular reason that I know this strike is actually going on. Really? As, much as, as much as I hate his guts, and as much as yes. I think these people deserve, like, a whole lot of nothing. Uh... His shorts about it is actually quite interesting. I like that he is trying to explain terms and stuff. The problem is he's an idiot. Yeah, he says idiot. so many idiotic things that, you know, when he finally starts talking about something he actually understands, being an actor. Uh, People don't really listen. It's hard for me to listen to him because I know that yeah. underneath that that face, there's the mind of an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and not like the good kind of idiot, that's like the Carl much, Pilkington kind of idiot. Like just for idiot. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> so, yeah, sorry about that. Um <laughs> Go yeah, so we're going to talk about that. Uh, let's see. Skep is uh, is dying in the heat. Let's see. So that leaves Sora. How are you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good? You went for yeah, a walk? Yeah, can't really the... complain. Yes. With the doggo? That's nice. But, but, but the doggos. <laughs> doggos. There's two of them. That's right. I only know of the There's one two. that causes you so much trouble. Yeah, well, they both do, but one is just more of a bitch than the other because she's a bitch. <laughs> <She's a diva. laughs> but no, it it was good. It was good. Um, other than that, no, everything is kind of nice. It's uh, I was saying before stream that we are going into stage two water restrictions here, which I just found out while we were waiting to start. That means total like. You cannot uh, water your lawns anymore here. Mm -hmm. Unless you have a sprinkler or system or you use... <laughs> not yet. We're not We're not Australia <laughs> not bad, bad no. thankfully. No. no but other good. than that, no, everything is pretty good. Um, good. Can't complain, though she's always good. Do you like to talk but, about the otter? Um, oh, very much so. Okay. I stand with 841. Okay, so... Uh, since I've been rearranging the show mid-fly, I'm not going to load 40 tabs all at once. So I, hopefully everything will just load and that the internet gods will smile upon me tonight. Otter April 1 is quite the attraction for locals and visitors. That? But now mm -hmm. many are reporting that people out on the water are getting way too close to sea otters and are disturbing them in their natural habitat. Ugh, of course. Of course. Everything Recently, good. Recently, Otter 841 has been making headlines nationwide. But now, many are concerned about people harassing other sea otters in the same area. Just because one particular sea otter is climbing up on surfboards and coming to humans doesn't mean that the whole population does that. Local photographer so Mark stupid. Woodward captured these photos of kayakers and paddleboarders nice. getting close to They're sea otters. They're not even otters. people. They're Californians. He says in just the last <laughs> week, people caused a group of about 10 otters to flee. And other times, people got as close as two feet from the otters. Yeah, what that's so many different kinds of uh, not right uh, is so, it the same so, woman who got close to the buffalo? So starting with Sora, what, uh, what would you like to see done to the people pestering the otters? Well, I mean, what, what do you think is a suitable punishment? Hmm. Mm, public uh, uh, flagellation, maybe? I don't know. Like the stocks, and then we just throw some yeah. like raw shellfish at them or something? Yeah. Well, oh, no, no, no. Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. Cover them in chum. 
right? Like uh, like uh, oh, fish no. guts and everything, okay. and then yeah. drop them out in open water where sharks are. You know how cold Let the water is here. You don't need to do that. Offshore. You drop them in open water in uh, this part of California, they will freeze they, long before they get anywhere near. Yeah. <laughs> They, okay, that that that'll take a little while. They'll know what happens before they go. <laughs> you know, why is Fourteen it, minutes. Why is it that every time people see some dumb crap on the internet, they automatically feel feel obliged to do the same thing that they just saw? Well, for because the outer eight for one thing is kind of a unique story, but people are just so clueless. It's it is it's so incredibly illegal for you to pester a marine mammal. You're just not yeah. supposed to. And morally wrong. Well, and morally wrong Pester too. Wildlife. Well, we I used mean... to make little jackets out of them. They were. Uh, <laughs> that's why there aren't that many of them. <laughs> and the fishermen <laughs> did not like them because they can eat uh, a surprising amount of fish. Uh, oh. To stay warm in that water, the uh, they have a pretty that's high a caloric intake, so they're competing okay. with the fishermen. So traditionally, fishermen would just kill them. People would kill them and make coats out of them. And that's why there's just so few of them and why we have to kind of keep our hands off. Because as a species, they have not come anywhere close to bouncing back yet. Spud gun. How about dipping them in salt? <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to at least get rid of the fur first. Um, what are you referring to? <laughs> well, salt in you one hand, vinegar like in the other. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. No, no. Because uh, he's saying, how about flaying? Right. The people oh, are, are we going after the otters or the people? I've been trying to figure out who the were people. the people. The people. Okay, good. Good. Yeah, yeah. Leave yeah. the otters alone. Clay first, then dip in salt. Open <laughs> and, ow. and then a shock. little bit of lemon juice. <laughs> no shock. Mm. <laughs> Long before. Well, I, it's just, it's so hard to have nice things when people just kind of ruin it. Because what was a beautiful story about an otter against the world is now a story about annoying douchebags getting too close to marine mammals. And you know they're just going to overreact. And then a lot of people are going to get tickets for shit they shouldn't, you know, get tickets for. Because the well-meaning people are going to step in and they're just going to make everything miserable for everybody. So thanks, thanks annoying people at the, <laughs> at the ocean. Thanks, Bradley. So I have another little another story friend. for you, which you might you might enjoy. Okay. All right. San Francisco residents want library to turn off Wi-Fi at night. Um, <laughs> now, the reason for this may sort of surprise you. I don't know if this is going to try to play a video or not. Well, we'll deal with that when it happens. Uh, residents of San Francisco's Castro District continue to deal. Oh, look. We did get a video. Let's see. Hold on. Across from the Oh, this is terrible. Oh, right. it's buffering. Yeah, it's being stupid. It must be Canadian servers. Um, all right. So we're just going to do this the old fashioned way. So residents of San Francisco's Castro district continue to deal with the endless problems surrounding homelessness and drug addiction. Recently, a new problem has surfaced. Their local library has become a magnet for those living and using drugs on the streets. Now, some are asking the library to turn off the Wi-Fi in an attempt to push them out. Now, there is actually <laughs> free <laughs> Wi-Fi. Oh, There's man. free Wi-Fi on the streets of San Francisco in that area. So you may ask yourself, why? Why do they need the, to hang out near the library and do their drug deals and do all this other stuff at night? Why can't they just use their regular Wi-Fi? Well, you see, the Wi-Fi at the library is better than the city Wi-Fi because it is good enough that you can actually stream on it. The city Wi-Fi isn't good enough to do streaming. Are they doing bum fights again? So, 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 so that the homeless people can stream whatever it is they're streaming at night, they have to be near the, the library, and they want them to supply free All Wi-Fi. Homeless people are going to stream. When, when you say stream, do you mean in like a physical sense? Like are, are, are no. These are, okay, just check. I mean, in the internet sense. So the thing is, like, who knew that homeless people could sound so privileged? I mean, this is like... <laughs> This is like the whine of somebody who's at work because say, they because they can't look at YouTube or they can't look at TikTok videos when they're sitting when, on the can on their lunch break or something. Right. You know, when it's like, hey, can you get in there and fix the Wi-Fi? Because, you know, when I'm in the employee bathroom, I can't uh, I can't look at TikTok. I figure it's my time. I can do whatever I want. 
Excuse work on that. Me, I am homeless. <laughs> I want free Wi-Fi immediately. But it, this is sort of like the uh, the sound, the, the thing that emits weird high frequency noises to drive teenagers away so they won't loiter. It's oh, that sort of thing. Well, what, what can you do to get people to not hang out around a building, you know, to just Soap. go home? Well, turn the Wi-Fi off. <laughs> and last I checked, because you know it, it's been a ballot of back and problems. forth, they actually are turning it off. You know what you could do, Harry? Yeah. You really wanted to drive them out. Dare I even say it on the air? I don't know. Are you going to get the minions canceled? <laughs> <laughs> just You could, uh, say, sabotage it somehow so that bad things happen to people who use that wi-fi well yeah i think it falls into three that, three you know. categories doesn't it you know <laughs> <laughs> yes, stupidity so. through convenience <laughs> <laughs> well i would hope that the that the homeless would get like a free vpn connection or something mm -hmm. <clears throat> That seems like a good thing. I mean, I think that I think they should petition for all the homeless in San Francisco to get free VPN service. Surfshark. <laughs> yeah, Surfshark. I, I think they should they should outfit them in luxury <laughs> chaise lounges with drugs piped in, and you know, in front of a gaming console with all the pizza they want. Make it Domino's; they won't care. And you know, just do that till they die. And when they die, flush them away clean the thing down, get get ready for the next guy, and have that be an industry. California could come back with that. Is that your modest proposal, Skip? That's my modest proposal. <laughs> okay. Let's eat the children. All right. So in Southern California, I think I, did I mention, I can't remember if we actually got around to covering it, but there's an RV, sort of an impromptu unofficial RV park that was opened up uh, near San Francisco, uh, sorry, Los Angeles. And it was absolutely terrible. There was like human waste flowing out of the thing. And it's just a miserable sort of thing. And for years, the residents have been trying to get these people kicked out because it's a menace to the to the neighborhood. And oh, they this finally, is this or? is L.A. Oh, oh wow. and so they finally got this uh, this thing closed down. And uh, here's where we are right now. Despite being told to leave the property two days ago, there are still some people living in the RVs. Eyewitness News reporter Christian Cordero joins us live from Silmar with the latest developments. Christian. Yeah, Giovanna, some people, including the homeowner herself, city and county officials have stopped by this property several times in the past few yeah, weeks. Yeah, makeshift is being it, generous. To offer housing uh, for the people who live there and to cut the power. Now, because the Superior Court judge ordered everyone here to leave, we expect at some point that they will come back and make sure that has, in fact, happened. So far, it hasn't. Uh, there are still 20 or Look at that. Wait, is this on someone's private property? This is on somebody's private property in a residential neighborhood. And she and this this woman's allowing them the, the homeowners allowing these people to be on her property in exchange for uh, financial consideration. Yes, she's Jesus charging them Christ. between five hundred and eight hundred dollars a month to park their RVs, basically here. She's making bank because twenty of those at mm. at five hundred dollars a month that's some pretty good passive income. Yeah. Yeah. What, RVs or so on the lot the with the generator issue? going. We're told some tenants. Well, the issue is that you can't open Don't an RV park uh, in a residential neighborhood, and the the biggest part of it is the the human waste. There's yeah, no I way for those black water tanks to to do what they're supposed to do to be hygienic. Okay. Yeah. So um, it's essentially yeah. like having an open sewer opened up in your neighborhood. Ultimately, also, though, I don't yeah. think that that's going to be the problem with the uh, the local te with the local uh, city council. Uh, they're going to be like, "Where where is our money? This is the wrong zoning." <laughs> exactly. Living Bastards. in there, how many though? We're not exactly sure. Some accepted help from the city are, are now staying in a temporary in emergency shelter, but out. those who stayed here at the home in Silmar are siding with the homeowner, Cruz Florian Godoy, who had until Sunday <laughs> to get yeah, out. That's, One that's, of her that's, that's, that's the beginning. That she doesn't plan to leave, and she spoke mm. last night saying she doesn't think anything she's doing was wrong. I feel really sad. They say I've lied to them, that they've become sick while living here, but I say sorry because I had no idea this was happening to them. <laughs> she seems like a real gem, doesn't she, Skip? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. That, that's... 
the face of every con man ever. Oh, God. So even when they, they finally get the court to tell her to cut it out, they're still not getting the clue. I hope the court comes <laughs> down on them like a ton of bricks because they usually take a pretty Amen. dim opinion of these sorts of things. I now, so. a lot of a lot of these RVs are not actually functional. What they are are just yeah. sh- hull, hulls, husks yeah. that are taken from dump... Uh, what are they called? Dump, uh, dump yards. Scrap dump yards. yards. The, yeah. yeah. So they, they get these things and they just basically cart them over to where people are going to live and they live in them. It's not a functioning RV. It's basically mm. just the, the hull of one. Worse. And uh, so when they tell these people they have to leave, a lot of times they basically have to pay somebody to tow the thing away. At some point, the city's just going to come in. They're going to clean this stuff up and they're going to send her a bill. There's no way that that gets a certificate of habitability. Oh, no. That, that, and that's, it, you know, any any decent district attorney or, or chief of police is going to say, hey, you're obviously out of line with the regulations. We're coming in. We're going you know, to get a subpoena. We're going to come in and do an inspection and uh, just lay waste to this thing, which is what needs to happen before the cholera break, breaks out. That's going to be really bad if that happens. That's going <laughs> to spread really fast. The yeah, Dante is, mentions is that, it's junkyard. Thank you. That's the stupid word that I couldn't couldn't remember. The The problem is, is that by the time they get all of the, the legal filings taken care of, it's going to be like two years. Yeah. You know, in, in my defense, you know, the whole dump yard thing, that one of the things that's uh, as... Uh, Kareem Jump here would say is top of mind right now is I have this portable air conditioner that I wanted to get rid of and I called the transfer station, you know, not the full on dump, but just the place in town where garbage goes before it goes to its final resting place. And believe it or not, to get rid of one of these portable air conditioners, they wanted, I shit you not, one hundred and sixty dollars. Ugh. How badly Fuck do you want this to be found by the road, ride. you know, just by yeah. the roadside? How how much do you not care about That's people prohibitive. just yeah. ventilating these things into the that atmosphere? That's prohibitive. $160, but it's most, no. For many no. People, yeah, they'll say, no, fuck you. But, but, Skip, it's the government. Everyone just does what the government says. It's the law. Everybody follows know. the law. Well, more of a guideline, really, but yeah well actually <laughs> most people don't the thing about the law is that uh, it's almost impossible to do anything without breaking a law and right. then it's just up to the government to decide whether they just want to come down on you you know you can it's walk just... down the street and there's no um mens rea defense for most uh, federal law it just blows my mind it seems as though the government exists purely to crack down on the honest people and let the criminals walk around free well, there's no, there's nothing in it for them to basically step on the actually, neck of the criminal. Actually, I, w- I would term it more the government. The harm that the government does is through its blunders and its inertia, its its inability to be nimble, and the lack of um, the the lack of anyone to ever have. Uh, any initiative about their job. There's just very little to drive you. The thing about working in government service, I've worked a lot with government servants. I've, you know, was in the Navy. I know what it's like to work for, for my uncle. It, it's a, um, can be mind numbing. That's, uh, uh, the, the amount of bureaucracy you have to go through to do anything inside the government yeah and and yet, yet there, for, there's nothing to make it efficient that's the problem that's the and yet for problem. some reason we continue to request more bureaucracy mm-hmm. well, nevertheless we never think because they'll think fix this problem and then fix that problem and fix this other problem and more and more money more and more money and and still the problems keep coming up because guess what problems are good for business Problems mean you get to give jobs to your friends. Give jobs to your friends give, makes you more powerful. That's the way bureaucracy grows. Yeah. So, That's... Skip, I have the perfect clip for this. I've actually been sort of keeping it in my back pocket. So if you want, mm-hmm. I will play the perfect clip for this, and we can have this actual conversation next week or maybe cool. on Tuesday. Yeah, I would love to. 
But I have I have an absolutely perfect clip that will drive you into, uh, you know, you'll become slightly apoplectic, Peri- and we we stop perioxium. Yeah, and then at some point you'll you'll come back to your your senses, and we'll have a real conversation. But it's <laughs> it's a terrible terrible thing. All right, so let's see. So, yeah, and then the the latest thing is some people are just saying, well, we're not going to leave. Hi, in the last few hours, <laughs> these tarps were put up along the fence, as you can see behind me, so it's hard for us to have a view inside the property. Uh, we can't tell how many people remain here, but we did see several people leaving throughout the day. Yes. See, that fixes everything. Just build a wall, right? Right. <laughs> if you can't see them, then there's nothing to worry about. The, the, this is fine. This is fine. Absolutely. Um, it, this is this is very interesting. So we're we're dealing or we have been dealing here with tent cities for a very long time right Mm -hmm. except for the difference is that our tent cities are people who are actually homeless they're they're camping on government property so for a very long time nobody wanted to touch them because the public outcry whatever and eventually after enough fires and explosions of gas cans and everything like that they started cleaning things up by actually literally throwing away people's stuff um but here, it's on some of the property, right? You can't, unless it gets to such an extreme, but like even to this point, it's gotten to the point where waste is is in the going to fresh water supply, it's a polluting yeah. the neighborhood, and still they haven't entered the property to actually do anything because America, like what are you going to do? Enter someone's private residence without whatever? You, you can't do anything. I want, I want to see them come in, come in with the military, burn the place to the ground, and clear them up, but you can't because... Then you have a different problem on your hands. Oh yeah, but well, you've got nothing it'll but be, problems. It's, it's, this is very amusing, and I'm sorry for people who are living there, though. It, this is just horrible. Yeah, but. when this happens next door to your house, um, mm-hmm. it, it has an effect on on uh, one's mental health and property values. And, it's and not you good. You can't even you exactly. You can't even escape. So say you are one of the neighbors there, and you're like, okay, well, this is ridiculous. How you can't leave because no one's going to come into your neighborhood and purchase your home after they see what's next door yep and say even if you go at the cheapest possible right it gets to a point where you're basically like uh, financially harming yourself to get away from there it's almost uh, Mm. worth just leaving that place maybe renting it out or something to very low income to come move and try to find another place to live right if you've got a big yard no way you sell it if you've got a big yard go over there and find like three or four of those RVs and offer them like four hundred and fifty dollars <laughs> a month and just start stealing your business. If you can't beat them, join them. That's not uh, uh, the official God, position of the is, minions. This this is the freaking barrios of Brazil. Yeah, well the they favelas. build the favela. You know? That's that's actually yeah. what I was thinking of. Uh, we're not far <laughs> from is that. What doing. Yeah, I was thinking of Kowloon, like the old walled city. Mm. 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 That's, you don't know what I'm talking about, do you? I don't. All right. I do I'll, know about the favelas. Listen. That's where uh, Bruce Banner listen. hung out. So the um, U.S. student sues over suspension for posting memes making fun of principal. This <laughs> seems like it really should be a no-brainer. So this kid essentially is a 17-year-old student from Tennessee. He posted three memes essentially ridiculing the principal for being too much of a Hard ass and having no sense of humor. So he made one of them as a cat girl maid. And he was right. <laughs> yeah. Because why not? And uh, so he ended up getting suspended for three days. Well, this is completely not acceptable. So the, you know, the fire group, the, you know, freedom for, uh, in freedom for the basically the academic free speech people had stepped in and helped him uh, sue the pants off of them. And so he's going to get a lovely cash prize and uh, I, I hope this sends a real message to these people because it's really, really important for uh, public officials to be people that you can mock. And even though they want to have these school policies that say, well, you can't do anything to make the school look bad or to denigrate anybody who's a student or who works here. It's like, no, you're the principal of the freaking school. People should be allowed to criticize you. And that's yeah, and why they what, got their pee pee whacked. What's- What's more, these people, they got to get over this whole thing. I mean, 
if he posted it in school, that'd be one thing. But if it's on his own time on a separate platform that has nothing yep. to do with the school, yep. it's none of the school's damn business. He was on his own time. Is it was not using any of their resources. That now they are going to pay him uh, the parting gift is eighty thousand dollars. And as part of the settlement, the people in the school are going to have to take um, free speech, uh, like awareness <laughs> training, which just, uh, just to me is like, is there anything that you beautiful. can sue somebody over that doesn't result in a struggle session <laughs> of one of one form or another? Oh, God, this just and, and you know what? Even if like you're saying, oh, it, it, even if it wasn't on his own time, the most that they should have done is is uh, is given him detention for like a month or something for using, uh, you know, going against school code and using like school computers for personal things. If you, you weren't supposed to do that, right? That's the most that they could have done. Uh, right, to think of not, not even they wouldn't they shouldn't have even, you know, foundation for individual for rights and education. Sorry, oh, I'm I'm beautiful. very tired. My brain is not it's, it's slightly gelatinous at this point. I apologize. Same. But you know, with the whole community reminding me of which words I meant to use, I think I'm actually <laughs> going to, we'll make it through to the end of tonight. Now, uh, essentially, I have three stories that fit together. First is this one. And then, uh, so there's that one. And then there's this big story that came in here. Um, there was a student journalist who, well, let me just something play this. Something extraordinary happened today, something that has shaken the Bay Area, Silicon Valley, and the entire world of science and education. The president of Stanford, a university that consistently ranks in the top three in the world, resigned. Mark Tessier Levine, who has led Stanford for seven years, sent out a letter announcing his departure at the end of next month. It with comes shit. after months of explosive reporting by an 18-year-old student journalist who spent his freshman year digging into accusations that the president of his university supervised falsified research and allowed it to be published. Joining us live now, Stanford's sophomore-to-be and investigations editor of the student newspaper, the Stanford Daily, Theo Baker. Theo, thanks so much. Holy for crap, good for him. Yeah, so we got to pause it for just a moment. So just to put this in perspective, Stanford University is worth billions of dollars with a B. It has a larger mm. budget than several United States states and many countries in, in, in this world. It is a huge, incredibly important, incredibly influential institution. Um, and the fact that he was the guy at the top and that he's being knocked off for whatever reason. 7.8 billion. It is going to create a power vacuum. Um, now, there have been rumors of him kind of monkeying with the data just floating around there and what this kid picked up on were those rumors and started looking into it because there were no shortage of people saying hey this doesn't look right but by him basically writing article after article after article in the stanford daily he ended up bringing it to the attention of the administration and they said wait a second and they opened an investigation and this all just sort of this guy's career fell apart very quickly once the actual investigation started. So this is a now, huge win for this actual, kid. Jeez, uh, how, long, how long a period did he conduct this campaign? It wasn't that long. He's just, it's just, he's been, he just finished his first year at Stanford. Oh, wow. So he, but he had to do this article freshman, several times. Huh? Yeah, he's just about to become a sophomore. Joining us. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. I'm sure it's a really busy day for you today because Tessier Levine's resignation really caps a stunning set of events that you put into motion last November when you wrote the first article about potential missteps in the work done by his lab before he came to Stanford. What were those allegations? Yeah, so um, it's oh, important yeah. to note that, uh, you know, there were whisperings of, of something regarding alleged uh, or manipulated research well, that uh, Tessie Levine had published that were floating around the Internet for years. They were hiding in scientific forums, they were hiding on like blog this. posts, but they'd never been reported, even while Stanford, uh, uh, he assumed the post of Stanford's president, uh, where he directs an institution with more than $8.9 billion in yearly funding, higher than 11 U.S. states. So these allegations revolved around the idea that uh, images that were published in yeah. his paper. Here, here's uh, the images. I think this is too much for the layman and myself to understand. <laughs> um, but bottom line, I think what you were able to glean from talking to lots of scientists is that uh, this data 
was not correct when it was submitted to publications, right? And that uh, somebody at the top of the lab, whose name is on the lab, should have noticed? Is that what they said? Yeah, so um, as you can imagine from a story that has been progressing over the months, there are a lot of different allegations that have at this point uh, come out of the woodwork. Um, the original story focused on uh, a number of different errors, like the one that you can see on your screen here. That is what uh, forensic image analysts call a type one duplication, where the same blot is literally just replicated and put in another uh, space. Some of the manipulations are a lot more tricky to spot. Um, little bits and pieces are spliced together to make it look that, like there are different results. All told, there are about a dozen papers on which Tessie Levine is a co-author, a named co-author, that seem to have manipulated imagery. For five of those, he's the principal author, uh, and he's now agreed as a result of this report that also led to him stepping down to uh, retract, or, retract or issue lengthy corrections to all of these very widely. And that's basically the, the gist of the story. I mean, this is kind of huge. But, you, you know, yeah. Good work on so this kid's was part, this, though. So, so was so this resigned. done? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Go, go ahead, Sora. Sorry. So, just for, just just a clarification, was this done uh, under his purview as the president, or his own uh, research prior to becoming president of Stanford? I believe this was prior to him becoming president of Stanford. <laughs> and and yes, it I'm was. I'm I'm curious. I mean, I don't expect anyone to know, but when it says his name was on the paper, was this kind of like the? I uh, oh I I, I looked name. into this, Jack. I can give you some insight on this. I read I read uh, kind of into this, and it sounds to me like he was in charge of you know some research themes, and he said, okay, the goal of this research is to prove this. This is the hypothesis mm. I want to prove. And uh, the data better look like this. He, uh, there were accusations that he was a tyrant, that he in in encouraged tyranny, or even outright, you know, uh, being sketchy with the data. That the results better look a certain way, and he really showered favor on the ones who brought in the good results, and really uh, was very, very critical of the people who brought in real results that uh, they hadn't doctored to. Uh, uh, make it look good. It, I mean, he evidently was completely corrupt, a complete, uh, you know, pissed off, cynical tyrant who was, you know, basically just working the system at this point, not really providing any uh, uh, academic value at all. All that research is, is throwaway now. All if it was 1950s gone. Russia, uh, the, he would have done very well because that's <laughs> right, exactly. that's how you keep <laughs> that's yeah. how you keep from you know okay comrade face yeah. wall you know that's that's <laughs> how right. you avoid uh, you avoid that sort of thing. But exactly, uh, well, what I well, want to see know, is just who's going to fill this power vacuum. Is it going to be another good person, sort of like you know Condoleezza Rice used to have this job, and you know, uh, and did a fantastic she... job when she was there, or is it going to be? Uh, some sort of struggle session, diversity yeah. hire, no it, terribleness thing. It, the question is, of our ages. It's not, yeah. it's not a person. That's the thing. This is that position is a bunch of forces pushing against each other. There are a lot of people who want a lot of different people in that uh, uh, position, and the person who gets in there is going to be pushed on by all those forces, almost regardless. Uh, of who it is. Yep. If they're an able administrator, you know, obviously that's a huge plus. If they if they can manage people, if they can spin up projects, get people interested, be an evangelist for the university. I mean, there's a lot, lot to that job. Um, I have a lot of opinions about that, but uh, that asshole was not the right guy, and I'm glad he's gone. He won't be missed. Yeah, good. He won't be remembered. You had a st question, Jack, or a statement? Well, no, I was going to say, first of all, trust the science. Yeah. Uh, I am trust the science. science. Yeah. <laughs> and second of all, what's going to happen to this kid? Because that's like, that's really going nice. places. Yeah, he's going places. Good for him. Yeah. A freshman in. Oh, what did you do your freshman year? Oh, I basically destroyed the school. <laughs> he did. Hey, Jack, one thing he did say that he did not want to commit suicide. He's not having suicidal thoughts at all. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Happy guy. Happy, happy, happy. Yeah, everything's fine. Everything's just fine. 
Yeah. Well, this is the way the system is supposed to work because I get into these. Okay. And I'm not going to start some long philosophy of science conversation here. Oh, come on. No, no, no. We don't have time for that crap tonight. <laughs> um, but in general, people say, well, you know, how do you know that the system's going to take? No, the system always ends up writing itself. And the example I give is there's always somebody young and hungry who's being kept out of the party because yeah. there aren't enough places at the trough for everybody to get paid off. And it only takes one person to be to essentially find a problem with your data for your whole little cabal of idiots to it all to come come crashing down. I there there's going to be more collateral damage to this. He's not going to be the only person that suffers. There were a lot of other names on those papers. And it's not going to look good for any of them. But be that as it may, let's yep. see. What do we have next? Let's see. Stanford. Good job, oh, kid. Um, so you remember our uh, our buddy, the uh, train spotting guy in in the UK? Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. So the question in my mind, of course, was: uh, Is this guy a pathetic loser uh, who will never, who's going to die alone as a virgin, or does he actually have some kind of social life? Um, well, here you go. Join me and my girlfriend on the UK's most luxurious train, pulled by one of the Queen's locomotives. The <laughs> Pullman coaches are something to behold, particularly this one designed by Wes Anderson with mahogany room. wood and geometric emerald green patterns. Cherry wine was presented in tiny teacups, and Bellini cocktails were very kindly poured for us. And just as I was showing off this pillow, <laughs> there's 73961, Digma Butt's sister locomotive, who's called Alison. Yeah, there is a, a locomotive called Dick Mabutt. Okay, but anyway. And then we got stuck into our brunch bowl comprising of baked granola and... What the hell? <laughs> you, you can behave like British. this guy does and, and still get this adorable little cupie doll? British. Yeah, they're British. Of course. <laughs> Bless you. Well, first of all, good for him. I, I, he seems like a nice man, and I'm glad he actually has a nice uh, girlfriend to spend time with when he's not chasing after trains. And second of all, uh, why the hell can't we have trains like that? That's, that looks amazing. I want to ride in that train. Because like, you'll you'll take your Amtrak and like it, damn it. <laughs> God damn it, Gunsky. No. You're, you're, looking, uh, you're looking at a few hundred pounds for a, tea, for a, a dinner on that train. Yeah. If it's the one I'm thinking of and it's just dinner service. You know, you know, I would I would still bet that their their costs are more efficient than Amtrak. You know, it's that... more of a sightseeing. So it's more of like uh, like, you know, you, you go from one place to another in the train, basically for the ex dining experience or just to be in a luxurious train. It's not so much of you're using it as a. a commuter train for example well they do have wine trains here where people will get on the train and yeah. they will just get all liquored up to and from the yeah the, the vineyards we, we have that here too yeah <laughs> i've always wanted to go on one what's fun yeah now jack you you probably well unfortunately i do actually know about the history of dining service on the american train systems again we don't have time for that whole conversation but the, the short thing is each of the regional train lines used to have excellent cuisine in fact it was it was very well put together you know much like you would on a high class ocean liner type of arrangement they they put a lot of thought into you know what they served when they served it was very regional and then somebody took over i think it was in the 60s and he said you know planes are kicking our ass why don't we serve the same kind of food that they have on the planes and they literally just just eviscerated or emasculated the whole menu idea for all the different train services that what later became Amtrak. It really that's, is a shame. That's so sad. Yeah. There, there is a, oh, it, you know, sometimes your algorithm gives you stuff. And if you keep watching something, it only suggests one thing. At one point I had this one channel where this guy, he reviews luxury train travel mm -hmm. And it, like he's been all over the place. Oh, I've seen South that Africa. one. Africa. I've seen I've seen uh, that one. Yeah. He he basically talks about like oh sleeping in a in a first class uh, berth at a on a or whatever they're called uh, uh, a sleeper in a sleeper room in a train and the food okay on some of these it's just amazing and it could be something very small just like whatever they have at the dining cart it's just it, 
I I love trains. Train travel is like the best travel. I wish we could bring that back. Yeah, I do too. I I understand. I mean, I don't know anything about trains as a locomotive themselves, but I understand his love. Like I I can, I you know, he, this this kid is infectious, man. And and maybe at, while we're doing that, we can solve a murder, <laughs> murder mystery. Yeah, maybe. Oh my god, I have I've been to a couple of dinner like like a couple of uh, dinner and murder kind of things where you're like part of the murders and murder happens and all the diners have to be a part. Can you imagine that on a train? Oh my god, I would die. This is the best. That'd be so much fun. That would be the best. Oh, so much fun. That's the thing, like because they're <sighs> so uh, non-economical versus other modes of transportation, they've become more of a novelty than actual means of transportation. Except for goods, we still use uh, railway to transfer goods quite a bit, and then put it on trucks. Yeah, it's sad. Understandable, as you mentioned, but yeah, they even have up here the Trans Canada line. They have really good deals to like, <laughs> you know, weekend packages or four day packages to to ride the rails, so to speak, in luxury. Yeah, uh, just I've I've never done it. I should, but I just never have. So I wanted to show you an image, but unfortunately, uh, I'm being too much of a boomer tonight. That That's Maybe suboptimal. <laughs> All I've got is I, one corner of it. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Harry. I have to I'm figure out how to scale you. it. I'm laughing with you. It's just so sad. It's so sad. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> okay, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm glad that he has a, a lovely, a, a lovely little fish. girlfriend. I'm, I'm happy for him. Actually, that's what? good. And Why I want to ride on that train. Why can the train guy get a girlfriend? But I can't. Damn it. I don't know. That's one of the mysteries of our Maybe times. Maybe you need to like trains. Yeah. Yeah, I, I gotta I, get into trains now. I think she's like, yeah, she's pretty damn adorable. Good for him. Issues. Yeah. Oh. Um. Hmm. Oh. This is a really rough segue, and I almost don't want to. Okay, I'm sorry. Kamala Harris accidentally articulated the ultimate goal of so many leftist policies. Think about the impact on something like public health. When we invest in clean energy and electric vehicles and reduce population, what was that? more of our children can <laughs> breathe clean air <laughs> and drink clean fuck? water. Yeah. So wait, wait. wait, wait. Reduce population. So, uh, so, so, midwit Michael thinks he's making some sort of great point about the whole population thing. The the question that I'd actually like. So behind all of this, there's some sort of implicit assumption. What is the correct number of people? Like, what is the optimum number? Because talking about which way the arrow is going, and I'm not suggesting that Kamala Harris or the government should decide who has how many babies or whatever. I don't want them being the ones that decide. But this general idea, okay. this general idea that anybody who talks about population as if it's like, oh, well, you know, don't you don't need to worry about that. It's all it's all going to be fine. What is the correct number functional? How many people is the optimum number of people on this planet? I mean, just do you have a sense of what it should be? Well, there's Five. no hard answer, but there are, you know, completely subjective answers. Like, from my perspective, I want to live relatively in balance with our, our, our uh, ecology, as well as be able to live comfortably uh, within relatively meager means. So, like, that means basically I don't have to, with all of our wonderful technology and advancements, I do want to contribute. I want to work. I don't want to work so hard that I'm breaking my back so that I'm barely making ends meet. And the law of supply and demand, a lot more people means you're, 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 and with uh, certain policies, your dollar is going to be worth less. Goods are going to be more expensive. So there's got to be some kind of like, you know, an uh, amalg uh, analogous uh, sort of middle ground where, you know, that, that number can fluctuate depending on, you know, there might be tragedies, there might be this or that. But uh, I don't want it so that uh, every square inch of the continental United States is now one giant mega city. That's way too much. Well, give me also, a rough. I give me a rough number. To, I don't. You, there is no number. There is no number because I don't have the data to like say, oh, you know, this amount of hectares of land can support this many people. I mean, land changes. I mean, certain certain agrarian, uh, not agrarian. Uh, um, uh, 
rural areas can support X amount of city life from their food growing and whatnot. Yeah. So I think we're at a fairly good number now. The problem is people don't want to live where they were, you know, dealt this lottery of where they were born. They want to go to the places with the most handouts. And that's causing huge imbalances uh, in places and uh, imbalances in the other direction where, they, where they're leaving from. Yeah. Also, I kind of understand giving the benefit of the doubt to Kamala. Mm -hmm. I know I shouldn't, but I like to be fair. No, when, you should be fair, when, even when, if she's when terrible. Say, she's just terrible. I want to be fair to, to all sides of the arguments. Um, when somebody says, okay, we want to increase education, healthcare, blah, 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 blah. That means that there becomes a more stable birth rate. Infant mortality drops. People don't have the need to have seven or eight children for fear that two or three might die before they reach teenagehood. So when we, like in, in Western society, we're in a good spot where, yeah, you can have your two and a half kids on average and everybody's going to be fine. The problem is, again, people from other cultures who don't realize, have that same Western mindset might go, oh, well, I need to have eight children so I can, you know, spread my seed around this, 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 this area it's it's you know it's a it's a it's a very primordial genetic uh, driver, um, and I don't want to like disparage or blame anybody specifically, but there is that mentality. Hell, even my parents, when when my dad came here, he had that mentality. Of, hey, I want to have lots and lots of children. Fortunately, they stopped at five because holy shit, my family's fucked up. Though. <laughs> but uh, you know, like I, I think that there there there. I don't have an exact number, but I think that there is a good balance. I think we're kind of at that point right now. You think that the current eight billion, billion is the right number? Is eight, what you're saying? Right. Eight. Okay. Yeah, that's maybe a little bit going to the the further end, but I think we're still okay. <laughs> okay. Anybody want? Every, anybody have a number? Jack, do you have a number? Uh, do you think I, there should be the world would be better number. if there were I more think people? Too much, but let's say a billion people. A billion. Okay. A yeah, respectable number. Sora, do you uh, you said five people, right? <laughs> Was it five yeah, or yes, five? If, if we're if if we're I don't have a, a an actual number with something Just like that. Just the five people. of us. Sora okay. wasn't everybody the, else. Yeah. <laughs> The problem what am I going to do for my World of Warcraft guild? They're all going to be gone, Sora. Did you ever think of that? All right, Scap. How many How many people? What do you think is an ideal population for the world? For, for the world? Probably yeah. Of humans? Yeah. Uh, it's going to be by continent. And, you know, you, mm. you've got to have them uh, interspersed in, uh, but a, on a typical continent, like, let's say, North America. I'm going to say between 100 and 100. 20,000. 100 and 120,000 people? Yeah. Yeah. Per continent? Mm hmm. Okay. All right. You know, my number Start is. Start a kit. My, my basic thought is as long as we can mount an asteroid defense, uh, I figure the number when we had Apollo was about three and a half billion. Uh, that seems like a pretty good number. I just don't. It's not that the world can't support more because it can, because technology is great. It's just that, is it going to be a world that you want to live in? I don't want to live well, in the Blade no. Runner world. I just don't. Yeah. It's you like, I don't care how good technology is. I don't want to eat synthesized <clears throat> food. I don't want to do any of this shit. It's not, it's not <clears throat> just that. I'm concerned about the economic impacts because at a certain point, I feel as though we can't really make uh, enough products in order to generate the economy necessary to support that sort of population. Oh. And so, and that's why we would be. What, what population you know, can we not support? Well, no, I'm saying that okay. since America has shifted to uh, a, a, a service. service economy, I'm I'm concerned because I don't believe that a service economy can really. Manufacturers, grow. manufacturers coming back. You been watching the numbers? I I hope it yeah, is because 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 service. It, a service economy it doesn't it doesn't seem like a real economy to me because when you talk about growing an economy billions of dollars based upon things that are not tangible in any way that that to me sounds like like a massive bubble it does sound like a stopgap <laughs> the point like I'm it's keeping the economy going but yeah, the, the point i'm clumsily trying to make here is that if you're going to make a comment like that like the the whole like we'll reduce population and do the raised eyebrows sort of thing. If you're not willing to actually say what you think the population should be, 
or have some kind of policy on that other than more. More is not a policy because there's going to become a point where it's it's just too many. The 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 competition for inputs into the various processes that we'll come up with, despite all of our best efforts, will not be enough. They will just not be enough. Per, and, perhaps the concern might be that government should control such an operation. Well, yeah, obviously, in, which I which I started with at the beginning. But to my mind, yeah. you don't get to have that reaction unless you're willing to give me a freaking number. Okay, mm. so if Michael or Knowles could could say no, yeah. I think it should be ten million. You're you're trying to push things in the wrong direction. Then I th- okay, so why do you think that, Michael? Because the, the 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 conversations around the whole population issue just always kind of infuriate me. It's a, it's a hot button yeah. issue for me because everybody is talking in such vague terms about it that nobody's willing to actually give them a number. I'm just like, yeah, and three point five billion. That was enough to have an Apollo program. That's enough for our asteroid shield. That's like my starting number. That's a good stand. I, would, I well, think yeah, we're also it, looking at two extremes here. Sorry, go ahead, Scott. Well, I, I yeah, I don't think I necessarily uh, understood what you were driving toward. Ideal for what? I, I was thinking ideal in terms of preservation of the environment without, uh, uh, you know, preservation of the earth without fouling it, basically. And, yeah. uh, you know, I think I just figured 100,000 would be safe for continent. I mean, the, continuity of the human species and quality of life for the humans on it. Well, That's what I'm thinking. Okay, yeah. okay. then, then I'm thinking numbers like you are. Yes, you have to have a diversified, globalized economy with you know lots of trade, lots of things happening, lots of different places, and uh, easy exchange and, and fast shipping and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, three billion to start a kid then. And people when, are, when I, birth rates are going down, like Jack said. And that's that was sort of the traditional model, except for the few places that stand out, uh, you know, stick out like a sore thumb, where despite all of those changes, they're just churning out babies like crazy. Yeah, looking to Bangladesh. Go ahead, Jack. I'm, I'm when, stepping on you there. No, it's okay. When I think, uh, when I think that the population is too high, uh, my main thought goes to my job. And the job, is, and I've talked about this on this show before, It's uh, a developer comes to us with a small piece of land and he tries to fit 20 houses on one acre. And, and it's like the, it's, it's, it's this, it's not just sprawl. It's worse than that. It's, it's trying to fit 10 pounds of shit into a five pound sack. And every single developer does it. Nobody actually Mm -hmm. designs houses to be livable anymore. And to me, that is a sign that things are getting too cluttered. They're just too cluttered. There's not enough space for people to live comfortably. It's it's a problem with the human psyche that we're going to be running across. People need space between each other. It's in, it's embedded in our DNA. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm reading. I'm reading through the chat. You know, why are they not addressing the third world concerning overpopulation? Well, that's what I was just doing a moment ago. I'm just being maybe a bit subtle about it <laughs> yeah. you know, when i when i refer to the places where despite infant mortality going down these are, there are areas where people are just breeding like just crazy pumping out you know, kids. they're just yeah. they're just pumping out kids and that is definitely a problem and fixing their problems by transplanting millions and millions of people into a united states where i think our current population is just fine the way it is we do not want to have population collapse in the u.s but we don't need duck millions and millions does. and millions problem, of new people coming no, in either. Duck but dog the says thing a is, good nuclear winter to thin the herd. <laughs> well, I mean, That's right. That was one point I was going to make is that, yeah, I mean, even though we are a very hardy, resilient species, barring, and it's usually because of the actions of the other members of our species, we can generally bounce back from pretty bad tragedy from things like infection, plague, uh, uh, famine, you know, we're very natural. resilient. We're very resilient. We tend to be able to re reestablish our population. But my other point was, we're looking at two very extremes here. I think I don't know exactly Kamala's point, but I can surmise that she, she wants a very <laughs> small population yeah. so that she can rule over, have a lot of power over a, a smaller, concentrated uh, 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 focus. Whereas well, with with Knowles, hold on, with Knowles, he's of He's a very religious person who clings on to things like go forth and multiply. And 
you know, I don't think either are right. I think we need to have that happy medium because we're not in a situation where we need to multiply like, like crazy because there was some kind of disaster or whatnot to replace the population. We're in a good point. And when they say, oh, well, we're, uh, government officials say, you know, oh, we're not meeting replacement needs. It's like, why do we need infinite, infinite, infinite growth is not sustainable. Why do we care if it fluctuates down or up within the margins? We shouldn't. We should, we should be concerned if it dips down or spikes up, but we shouldn't be worried about things that are relatively within the norm of uh, mathematical statistics. I think they use the language that uh, most people are ignorant to, to kind of go, oh, we're not meeting replacements. Well, we better, you know, or, or there's too many people, or, you know, like, and it causes that, uh, that, uh, that, that immediate visceral response. The sudden change in uh, reproduction numbers is bad. And it's it's not bad from a uh, prosperity perspective. It's bad in the you need people to take care of your old people perspective. Mm. But, but, but but where? Is it the global number? Is it the well, American? Well, you were talking about American politicians. It's like we... It is a bit of an issue if you've got an aging population and nobody coming along behind them to essentially take care of them. That's the, the issue. It's still kind of within the the acceptable margins, but you also have to take into consideration the amount of refugees and immigrants that come in to also add to the pool of people. And where these people settle is not where we need the population replacement, i.e. in rural, more rural areas. They generally go to city centers. We have a very similar uh, 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 situation up here, although our birth rates are just fine. Like we're, we're right on the line. Um, but we're still importing tons and tons of people and that's skewing other things. Uh, and in the grand scheme of how many people is too many people, I think that that is, we're, we're, you know, we, if we, if I think of, uh, I use the analogy if we use, or the metaphor, if we use, think of a cup of water and the water is the amount of people, the cup is the, 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 country and the resources that can sustain them, we need to let some of that water evaporate before we can start adding more water. And I know specifically because I know more about it here in Canada, we're just dumping water and it's pouring all over the place. Okay, you know? you're going to trigger Sora. She's She doesn't have any water. <laughs> I know. We have too much water. They don't have enough. I mean, you see what I mean? The analogy is that her cup runneth dry. Mine How is callous. How callous, right, Sora? So dry. So dry. Hey, we need to trigger. <laughs> do we do we actually know that Kamala meant to say reduce the population and not? She does because innocuous? because that's uh, that's the simpleton's way of dealing with uh, like carbon emissions and stuff. If you've got yeah. too many and you want to cut them by fifty percent, well, just get rid of half the people. That's what she's thinking. Whereas my comments of giving her the benefit of the doubt were more from sociological standpoint of you know, I was the margins were fine. I was just thinking maybe it was a gaffe and she meant to say reduce pollution, which I would think would sound no. more sane. No, no, they, they definitely population. Chat, chat is already pretty based on this. There's, uh, there's plenty of these uh, World Economic Forum people who would love to reduce the population. Yeah, I and mean, replace well, them with uh, more... Uh, I, I, uh, now, the I thing is, I kind of would, too, but on, for different hold on, reasons. Hold on, hold on, hold yeah. on. Don't get me wrong. I, don't th I do think that she believes that she should reduce the population. I just didn't think that she necessarily had the gall to co go out on stage and say, say it. it. I, agree. I agree with Jack. I think Jack's got a point. I don't think she meant to go out and say that. I think that was either misread the inside or voice? misread. Uh, something and what she meant was resources or something else that was supposed to be reduced. Nobody would write that into the vice president's speech and clear that for the vice president to say. I think that was a flub on her. You think part. it was a gaff? I gaffe. really truly do. I really truly do. Well, I mean, she is in the gaff machine White House, uh, so she's, maybe she's a, she's a fucking idiot. Maybe Joe's been yeah. mentoring her on how to I'm, how to yeah to how gaffes. to be even stupider. I mean, this this is this is the yellow school bus lady. Are we really expecting anything intelligent from her at sure. all? Okay, we need a palate cleanser. Um, <laughs> I mean, we need a serious palate cleanser, right? Who it's loves time. A yellow school bus. I love a yellow okay. school bus. Palette cleanser, Jack. That, Jack. Swifties caused 2.3 magnitude earthquake in Seattle at Lumen Field. <laughs> so many people Taylor at a Swift Taylor Swift uh, concert 
started oh. shaking it off at the same time that they caused the equivalent of a 2.3 magnitude earthquake. <laughs> that's a, that's actually pretty amazing. Well done. <laughs> um. So Sora, you're you're familiar with Taylor Swift. Is yeah. her is her audience still largely tweens and young teen girls? Honestly, I have no idea, but looking at some of the no. people on Instagram that go, I'm going to say not really. It's the people who grew up with her. I'm sure there are young yeah. people. Bikers but... and metal guys, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> people skeptical, yeah. you know. Because she's 33 <laughs> now, and it seems to me that, that at a certain point, she's a grown-ass woman, and she should be singing yeah. about grown-ass woman problems, not... Yep. Not, oh, my boyfriend, he's so bad, I'm never letting him come back. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> she should be matriculating I mean, to, like, the bad. next grade. Those are some grown-ass women problems right now. I mean, if, since we were talking yeah. about population, uh, women have been uh, lowering in, in, in uh, that kind of value. Yeah. Not to get too Tate on us, but... Those are quite the little Broken clock is... There's all sorts of stuff going on Twice a day. Yeah. So far away. Uh, but from that's the that's pretty amazing dancers. that such a conglomeration of people could cause a what two point three <laughs> two point three earthquake. Yeah. Damn. And I, where I, was I, this? Was this on a fault line or? Well, I mean, it was it was just the, the shaking was equivalent to it wasn't because yeah I know the but Earth where moved. where was it because that would be more impressive if say it was here on the Canadian Shield than it was you know in California along one of the fault lines. You can you can in some place without a fault functional you can just blow shit up at a quarry and it will produce it will produce an earthquake you don't need a fault yeah. to produce uh, this sort of thing. Yeah, um, there I'm, was, I'm just curious for, <clears throat> for there was a, a test that the Navy did. I think it's like three years ago, back when I first started hosting these shows, and I think we talked about it. And they blew up something in the ocean that was so big that it registered like a four something on the Richter scale. Oh yeah, 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 I remember that. That'll ruin your whole day. People so people thought it was Godzilla or something. Yeah, they were, probably. We were testing under the water. And there were memes about like Godzilla rising from the ocean or whatever. I thought, cool, bring well, it on, dude. Are you talking about the shock testing of the uh, the carrier shock testing? No, no, I'm talking about something Explosions way bigger. I think they were oil drilling or... No, they were actually trying to generate seismic waves for some sort of uh, oh, sub-detection okay. test oh, thing. Right, all right. Yeah, AKA. even... Oh, yeah, yeah sonar. Yeah. That's what it is. Okay. All right. So let's see. So the SAG after a thing. Right? Oh boy. So okay, so where to begin? So the main thing about this SAG after <laughs> thing that I don't think most people fully grasp is it's not just the new production and the new writing, right? That's on hold. All of the stuff that's in the can that they were going to launch. They, the actors are not allowed to do promotions for it, too. There's a bunch of other sort of auxiliary stuff. So this isn't just shutting down new production. This is shutting down a lot of the new releases because without the yeah, promotions, the studios aren't trying to actually produce anything. I'm just going to let what, Functional talk about this for like 10 minutes. So start talking and I'll ask questions because you know way more about this than I do. Sure, yeah. Um, so like... As some people might already know, I've been a part of uh, ACTRA, which is the Canadian version version of AFTRA. Um, and they have now, as of two weeks ago, all of the unions up here are now on strike in solidarity with them. It's uh, it's annoying. Um, I don't do it anymore, but I was a part of them. I know I still have lots of friends who are in the industry. And a big part of it is... A lot of the, you know, grunt work, the mill, run of the mill, uh, hard labor. So your grips, your cameramen, your your boom operators, your gra gaffs, your grips, your your, you know, just the just the people, the little people who really make these things work. Um, they are now told they cannot work. None of them really. I'm not going to say none, but at least from my experience, the people I know and who they talk about. So it's second, th third hand information, but it's from people in the industry have told me that they are pissed off because they just want to work. They have no problems with their contracts. Uh, they, they, they do this stuff. They go to, to, to work every day, just like you or I, and they come home, they get paid done. 
Uh, so the unions turning that they're forced to be in, otherwise they couldn't work in the industry, um, telling them that they can't work, that's a huge kick in the pants. I mean, think of, you know, the lockdowns where, I mean, let's be honest, the rules were reversed. Most of those studios had special exemptions to continue going while little mom and pop shops on, on the main streets were forced to shut down and you couldn't go to work and he couldn't go to work, she couldn't go to work. So um, it's really... The, a lot of it has to do with people trying to break into the industry in the creative side. So your writers, your showrunners, these people that are trying to break into the industry. Now, you would say, and you would be right to say, well, I don't fucking care because most of the new shit that's been coming out is utter garbage. And I agree with you. And those are the people, the primary people who are complaining. And let's not forget, this is a little bit of my own... Uh, editorialism these are the same people your brian cranston's your fucking jimmy kimmel's everybody else on the picket lines with them these are the same people who told you you needed to get a certain experimental medication or you were going to start killing people so on a personal level i don't fucking believe a goddamn word that they said uh, <laughs> if we look at the Sorry for the, the, the long-winded intro. If we look at the first one. Sorry, I didn't have it uh, up on my screen. Um, you have people like, um, what's her name? The one next to... Margot Robbie. Ryan. Margot Robbie. Margot She's Robbie. another one of the, the big stars who, you know, she could not work for the next 10 years. She'll be fine. Ryan Gosling, they'll be fine. These people who are the mouthpieces that we're supposed to listen to. Again, I'm getting a little tirade -y. They're, they're, they're going to be fine. They're just being mouthpieces because that means that they're going to be getting um, exposure, whatever. Yeah. Uh, going on to, uh, we are being victimized by a very greedy enterprise, sag after President Fran Drescher said yeah. Thursday's pr press conference. At some point, you have to say, no, we're not going to take this anymore. Take what, Fran? You're a millionaire. Shut up. It, I, you know what? If that, that amount of money isn't uh, sustaining you in your high-priced uh, a Californian home, then, you know, you can move, whatever. Um, SAG-AFTRA is fighting for higher wages, increased residual payments, and protections around using artificial intelligence. The Writers Guild of America is already on picket lines, marking only the second time in Hollywood history that actors and writers have been on strike at the same time. The other one was actually pretty bad. Uh, the WGA, which has been on strike since May 2nd, has since relaxed some of its rules surrounding press for members. So um, initially they said you couldn't do anything. You're not allowed to do any kind of promotional work, but then they kind of let loose the reins and say, okay, well, stuff that's already uh, like in the, in the, not in the work stage, but in the release stages, you know, where they're editing and people are doing press junkets. They're like, okay, you guys can do that. And you can see where they're kind of being, okay, you're the famous people. You can keep doing what you're doing. But again, the rest of the people, the, the, the run of the mill people, they're my friend. Uh, I'm not going to say his name, but my friend, he's got a he's got a fucking mortgage and three kids to support, and he's a camera operator for one of the biggest studios in Toronto. I I feel for him because, he, like I said, he just wants to go to work and come home every day and 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 make his way in life. This is so unfair to him and his compatriots. It's 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 ridiculous. Yeah. Well, didn't um, the didn't the vote on whether to strike or not? Uh, didn't they get like 97 percent of people voting for the strike down here in the U.S. Uh, I believe yes, but I believe that was yeah. of the counted votes. There were like a typical elect uh, governmental election. There was something like eighty percent abstention because people didn't think that it was going to come to that. Um, well, if you don't so, vote, then that's that. But I, of the I people know, who took I know, the time I know. to vote, I'm not trying to allay their their. But I'm saying yeah. You know, well, I just didn't want you to paint a picture of. Uh, I think your friend is more the anomaly with that many people voting for it. They think that now's the perfect time. They meaning the actors, right, and the writers. They think now is the perfect time to put their foot down. And from what it's I've been able writers. to determine, the the studios have said they're just going to wait them out because they're we're at, we're at pretty much an impasse. On a lot of the AI stuff, the um, yeah. I think I sent you the link to this thing. Yes, you did. I was hoping we were going to lead that, into it. Uh, Netflix has listed a nine hundred thousand dollar a year AI job as actors and writers continue to strike. <laughs> little bit. Wait, little bit of a correction there. It's between three hundred and nine hundred thousand. Yeah. It is for somebody to basically be the the 
conductor, uh, the, 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 who conducts the symphony of these AI algorithms that will pump out content. Nice. And so it is, it is a very kind of uh, demanding job. This isn't just sort of like, you know, the, the meme of like the, 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 the work, the workless CEO. No, th this is going to be a hands-on tech kind of guy, like a, a Harry uh, who's going to be in there working with the, the computer work, making sure things are flowing and you know, and, uh, I almost we went to work for ILM a... back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> I came so kind of... I came so close to going to work for ILM. Um, really? Yeah, it was 1992, and a guy I knew got a job there, and he's like, "We're hiring like crazy. You should come. You'd be a shoe in. Just mm. give me your resume, and I, I, you know, I'll even give you the bonus." And uh, and I saw him. About six months later, and he came driving up in this new ridiculous sports car that he'd bought. Yeah. <laughs> Things were good. Anyway, yeah. sorry, that has nothing to do with any of this, nor do we have time to talk good. about my stupid life. But, um, no, the, uh, but yeah, those kinds of positions are actually uh, pretty sweet. As the AI stuff becomes more mainstream, you're going to see those uh, salaries start to go down. Right now, well, it's just a struggle to find people who actually uh, aren't just spouting buzzword, you know, compliance who actually know something about yeah, this stuff. I would recommend um, Scribe did in, uh, a show about it two, two and a half hour show uh, a couple of weeks ago with uh, somebody who's uh, also involved in the industry. It was really good. Didn't mm -hmm. all, uh, agree with all the points being said, but it was really uh, illuminating for those who aren't in the know. Um, because a lot of these things, uh, if we go back, uh, okay, so they're fighting for higher wages. Yes. They're always fighting for more money. That's kind of a given. Um, depending on who you ask, that's not the main point of contention. Uh, one of the big things is increased residual payments. So as things... Uh, because of streaming in, services. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of, you know, the more high uh, prestige uh, Hollywood actors and actresses, their image and their person is their brand. So when... You know, Bill Shatner puts out the latest Star Trek film and it gets shown on TV 300 times a year. He gets a, a, a payment for every time it's shown. Now, when it goes onto a streaming service, because a streaming service isn't as regulated as the TV industry was, they can and they, they have a harder time saying um, or, or finding out how many times was that same movie that Bill Shatner was in. Was it streamed on Amazon and Netflix and this and Hulu and that and whatever? Um, that's that now. That's that's the the scumminess of the streaming service because that stuff should be a little bit more transparent. Um, I believe it's hard um, to make sure that the person isn't lying, though. If you're talking about something as innocuous as website views, you can embed something into a web page that goes to a third party, and then that gets counted, right? So yes. that's fairly straightforward. But once you get into a streaming thing with DRM, it gets a lot harder to um, sort of have the third party count the statistics of what's going on with the viewing. Like, what does it mean if somebody turns on uh, like an episode of Outlander and they watch five minutes of it? Because in streaming, and then they go and cook dinner while it's playing on the background. Yeah, it's, it becomes very hard. So you're almost looking at sort of like, you have this many subscribers, you get rough viewer numbers, and then you have to do a licensing deal that makes sense. And how people do licensing deals is, you know, an art and a science that's, you know, out of scope oh, for our oh, conversation right. here. Yeah. I think the real problem is that it has become so cheap to produce a lot of this stuff in the technical sense, right? There's very few mm -hmm. barriers to entry. So almost yeah. anybody can, can put together a production company and throw something together for not a lot of money. There are a lot of people doing what used to be highly paid jobs who now are working very part-time and not making a whole bunch of money. There's a bunch of people at the bottom working in, to in the rest of the world. working in sort of like you remember there was uh, um, the Amanda Tapping, Dean Anderson thing, uh, SG one. Right. And mm -hmm. so you had all these follow ons that come on and then you end up being like with sanctuary that Amanda Tapping thing with, it was Why almost it? all green screen, all yeah. CGI. It's web Mm -hmm. did not cost a lot of money to make that show other than a few salaries for like Heyerdahl and a few other people, right? That show was relatively inexpensive. Yeah. You start getting into like dark matter and all the other 
things. Each subsequent thing, as you get further and further away from SG-1, your budget is becoming lower and lower and lower. And so the argument that the actors' unions but, are making but, but is that it's not a living wage. A right, but well. it's not a living wage you know, for these JMS, people. JMS did, you know, what is it, 600 Amigas to make the, the CGI for that show, which at the time was very costly. Today, something yeah. like The Expanse, they can do their CG for basically pennies on the dollar. But look at how much crap is being produced. I, I, no, think, I, I think the, prob I the problem but, is that there's so much crap being produced that people are not, that there's a lot of people who are not making a living wage. They, there's a lot of people chasing a dream, and they're sort of stuck in starter job mode. And, and, and there's no way that all of the people in that, in that union are going to be making uh, enough money to send their kids to school and get a vac vacation cabin. It is just not possible. That's I, I think fundamentally yes, we're going to need the, if they start paying saturated. people more, if they start paying people more, the number of productions is going to decrease and the number of people who are actually employed in the industry is going to decrease. That will be so, the effect of it. I, I, th I see that as a positive, though. But the because... union wants to preserve as many jobs as possible. The fundamental yes. impasse is you can regardless. You absolutely America. could make it so that everybody involved in these things are like 90 percent of them make a living wage. I'm doing it in air quotes because I hate yeah, that whole yeah. term. Right. Yeah, but the yeah. only way to do that is to take all of the stuff that's kind of on the margin. All of the things where somebody like says, I don't want to work for somebody else. I want to have my own show. It's their dream. And they push that thing. All of that shit. We just need to get rid of it. So all that's going to be left is like higher budget productions, more like what we used to have 20 years ago and student films and, and passion projects. And there won't be any of this stuff in the middle. Um, I know. Um, yeah, I know. I'm maybe, being kind of a dick about it. I apologize. Maybe. But uh, I think, well, I think you're being more doomer about the industry because again, like we were talking about humans, the, the industry of entertainment is very, uh, uh, malleable it does bounce back um before we get too far away from it uh, the the increased residual payments point um first of all a lot of the lesser known people the less established people the actors like myself who had very few lines or no lines who are trying to break into the industry the writers who are trying to break into the industry we sign contracts yeah. so when when they when in one of my contracts so Movie A gets, uh, you know, greenlit and whatever, and I'm signed on. In my contract, it says you get a flat payment, let's say $300. That covers all your residuals because you're just not, your brand is not, you as a person being your brand is not strong enough to warrant a uh, pay to play uh, residual like your Bill Shatner's of the world. Um, so that's already in contracts. If they want to, uh, uh, work with SAG-AFTRA, their, their union, uh, to say, hey, we want to change the standard of our contracts that you present to the studios. That's one thing. This isn't th That part is not on the studios. The studios like the contract, sure, because it favors them. And so if SAG says, well, we're going to come at you and say, you know, well, uh, we need to increase the, the residuals of that one, one payment from $500 to $430 to increase with cost of living well here's the thing they've already been doing that they have already been they they do get a um air quotes market rate uh increase uh in their the standard contracts for things like your your daily work rate your residual rates you know whatever um another and and i wanted to hammer that point home before we get to the next big point which is protections around using artificial intelligence. The studios have been aware of it. They, they are, everybody's aware that, you know, um, whether or not they want to focus the attention on fast food workers who are being, and factory workers who are being replaced by robots to, you know, the big uh, actors and actresses and whatever. The, the big point of contention, the, 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 the part that's in legal limbo right now is to say, Okay, well, the state, uh, the, 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 the estate of, let's just use it because he's in the next article, Brian Cranston. We want to use his completely made up digitally likeness to make a completely new thing, not involving him in the slightest. And 
that point I understand. That is something that really needs to be, uh, they need to set a legal precedence in these contracts because there's, you know, the two extremes. The one extreme that says, well, no, we're not using you at all, so we don't have to pay you anything. A couple of studios have kind of been leaning that, that way. That's what kind of sparked the whole beginning of the strike. Um, most studios were a little bit more flexible on that than saying, okay, well, we'll, we'll either, and this will be contractually obligated, we'll either give you a flat rate, we'll pay you $10 million for your likeness, Harry. Done. Yeah. Okay, yeah, sure. I don't care. I never have to And we to want to keep the rights to your myself. likeness in perpetuity. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, you know, a lot of people would be fine with that, sure. People like, you know, Brian Cranston, who's a little bit more well-known, he's more of an actor, um, he's he's more worried about them taking it and using it without his permission. Again, I understand that side of things. And some of them, some of the more um, far out there people, I don't want to call them leftists, even though they probably are, people are dooming and glooming saying, oh, this is going to be the end of the entire industry and blah, 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 blah. It's like, well, no. I mean, what happens when a very well-known actor passes in the middle of filming a seven movie series of something you want as as the the person producing that product <laughs> i want to be able to cover that base and say okay well we'll we'll trim down some of their scenes but yeah we will use a digital likeness of them because you know and it's by no fault of the actor actress hopefully did you see they, that that last fast and furious thing with the the ghost of paul walker yeah no that was pretty amazing because yeah. he died part way through this thing, and I think it was the seventh installation. Yeah, and at the end they had like this. They used some of the footage. This <laughs> weird looking force ghost version of Paul Walker. It was really. Wow. Yeah, it, it was a force ghost. It, it was, was kind of. I was a, that's a joke, but I mean it, it looked bad. It I know, but it was really more of bad. like a uh, a memory in you know living a memory. Oh, that's kind of that's so sad. It is. Mm. Yeah, because it was the it was the conclusion of the series. And, but like, this is just licensing. Hammering. They can they'll just have to work this stuff out. This is just you know exactly. new technology. So it's not new technology scary. always requires changes to entertainment uh, yeah. law. Okay. What about you know who who was there to fight for all the telegraph operators, Harry? For, yeah. Sorry, I should ask. Yeah. The they could get carpal, the, the buggy whip makers. They could the get carpal uh, you know, carpal telegraph thing. People are resilient. We're malleable. We can adapt. But speaking of you things know, that suck, I want to show you ideal. a fish that I hate. Can we do or, that? Like Assassin says, yeah, you could recast a role <clears throat> because, you know, sometimes it, it's fine. Yeah, sometimes it is. Well, it'll be interesting to see how things play out. The The strategy of it's just such an impasse that I think this is going to be going on for a while. The studios are waiting for the actors yeah. to run out of money. And I don't think the studios, um, much like with the Bud Light thing, um, people are going to start exploring other options. They're going to find their, they're going to find ways to work and find ways to do stuff. And well, I, I don't think ultimately they're going to like where this is going. Nobody's going to like this. And the studios like Netflix will find that 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 conductor for their AI algorithms. Mm -hmm. And if if they be, if there is a true impasse, we might go through a very. We thought we had dark days of entertainment recently. We're going to go through a very dark day mm -hmm. where it's all AI generated and. I think that will be the darkest before the dawn in that there will be a renaissance. Because if you look at the trends of arts and entertainment throughout human history, these things ebb and flow. So question. We've been in an ebb for a while. Yeah. So we're due for a flow. But, uh, you know, there's no predicting the actual future. So what's I, the question? I have the Wonka trailer scheduled with five minutes next to it. Do you want to skip it or do you guys actually want to talk about this thing? The Timothy Chalamet mm -hmm. thing. Maybe maybe Sora does because she'll say Timothy's dreamy. No, he's not. He's gross. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. He's emaciated. I'm sorry. I, he's he's got he has a certain like. Sure, we'll watch it with the sound off. I spent the <laughs> look to him, which I understand why people think he's cute and stuff, but not. He's not dreamy in that sense. Apparently, no, this is like how you make baby. chocolate, right? That's how you make chocolate. Let's see that again. I saw this stupid trailer. It's like, I, I know how you make chocolate, and this is not how you do it. You None of that, none of those, none of those, and that's no. It's Wonka, though. It's magic. Yeah. Yeah, and there it, he is taking on big chocolate. This, the, the type of 
the coloring, like of the the I guess the heat of 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 the of the lighting that they use or whatever, mm -hmm. it's a, a specific kind of. They used it for uh, Hugo, which mm -hmm. is very good. It looks exactly like Hugo, uh, which I I, re I completely recommend to anyone who wants to to watch it. It's a very good movie. It looks like Hugo. It looks like a series of unfortunate events. Well, that was Rowan Atkinson. I don't know. There's a lot of stars in this. It's. Uh, oh, he's actually playing Wonka. So is this like a? Pre it's it's a prequel. It's a prequel. It's like how he, oh, God. Uh, you know, I guess how he gets the Oompa Loompas and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, he he no. worries an Oompa Loompa. That's I just ruin the mystique and the mystery and the magic yeah, of what fun. made Roald Dahl's it's story so canon. fucking fantastic. It's not canon. This is going to be the Dragon Ball <sighs> GT of uh, of uh, chocolate movies. Gene Wilder was one of my favorite actors, and every time they do anything with this particular <laughs> property, it's it's terrible. It's because he set the he set the platinum standard. It's going yeah. to be hard pressed, if at all. Like he, oh, he did in practically standard. everything he was. Uh, everything he touched. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I'm saying, Skep, we're kind of in a dark day because how many few actors can you say and look at and be like, you know, a handful of them? Funny today little man who's been following me. I will have you know I will that go I will see whatever they size. put out because I know that they will chew up that scenery. They will make I, I that. do want to see oh, no. Hugh Grant is that Hugh as a new Yes, it is. Oh my so God. it sounds like, might actually be so it funny. sounds like Sora's gonna, Sora wants to see it and everybody else I, doesn't. I want to see it, but I don't want to pay for it. So I'll wait for it to come to streaming. Yo, don't want to don't don't encourage it. it. The, only, the only thing is if I go with friends and somebody uh, uses their like scene points to buy a ticket for Mimi. <laughs> okay. Or if I have I scene points, I will get a free ticket. Not that she's hinting here on the air. Yeah. <laughs> See, I wouldn't even do that because um, I want to flex as as minute as one person's consumer power is. I want to be able to flex my consumer power to anything I partake in and show them uh, and hopefully other people follow suit and say, okay, well, for the first two weeks, I won't see Wonka. I will wait until it does hit Netflix or Hulu or whatever to watch it at a discounted price. And the initial box office hits really are still the primary motivator of these big theatrical releases. So, Skip. Um, the same can be said with a, a lot of other things, like with my Warhammer and stuff. Skip. Yes. Have you ever heard of a hagfish? Yes. <laughs> That's the fish that I hate today. At the bottom of the ocean dwells a bizarre looking creature. This thing is fucked. Your mother in law. <laughs> a fish so ancient it has remained unchanged for 300 what? million years. It's That's old. my first ex wife. Yeah. Hagfish? This <laughs> is the hagfish. Ew. Yes, yes, that's her. It's that velvet her. smooth skin, lacks scales, and slithers along the ocean floor. Yeah. Oh, this is her attorney. It yeah. has a skull, but no spine. Yeah. I hate this fish. <laughs> Tiny Why? holes run along the sides of its wriggling body. Look at, wait till you get to the some mouth. Some for breathing, and some Catching. for sliming. But sliming. its most bizarre feature is its mouth. <laughs> Like something out of an alien movie. Oh, well, yeah, it's where Geiger got a bit of his. Look at those teeth. Oh my god. Yeah. That is, that's fascinating. Inspiration for a lot of it. <laughs> I buy This jawless maw is made for mincing up dead bodies. Ew. Multiple so rows you, of sharp teeth so are. If you want to murder people, get yourself some hagfish. Get yourself some yeah. hagfish and then. And uh, some crabs. Later, it shows them actually feeding. With its single nostril, it picks One up the nostril. sweet scent of death. <laughs> death. I love the narrator. A feast yeah. has arrived. <laughs> yeah. Death feast. Nom, 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 nom. Here we are at the death feast. Yay. It has us. no fins, but its paddle-like tail oh, wow. makes light death work feast. of swimming. This looks like something out of a video game. Is it? This is this is fantastic. No, it's terrible. Well, the hagfish latches on and it's mouth goes to work. We get a lot of our inspiration for um, science fiction from the ocean. 
looks like found in the ocean. It looks like a liar. Flesh is ripped from the carcass and shoved down its toothy throat. Soon, it's a frenzy of multiple mincing mouths. Yeah. And then, so what they do is while they're feeding like this, they they slough off like this weird sour mucus so that if that something, something tries to come along and steal their prey or, or molest them while they're eating this, they go, ew, snot, and then they go away. It's kind of like a giant fart, yeah. Yeah. Nice. It's very unpleasant. No, this is an unpleasant fish. <laughs> <laughs> so what kind of friends and they do they taste off what kinds of friends do they have the, the hagfish sunfish. yeah sunfish. Do, do they hang out with sunfish yeah Eat maybe if, because they, they eat them while they're alive and they're just oh, whatever, whatever i'm just trying happen. not to click on the emacs thing because i love it so much <laughs> Let me tell you, but Emacs is not a text editor. <laughs> Emacs is not that hard. You can't learn Emacs in one day, every day. Uh, how do I write my blog posts? Emacs. How do I do my project management? Emacs. <laughs> DNA sequencing? Emacs. Pro monks? I think I, I, I calc what was it? I sent a note to you and Prospero about how many times I had invoked yes. Emacs in a year. Yes, yes. What yeah. was it? <laughs> yes. It was some completely ridiculous it number. It. it was like 40 or 90,000. Here, let me see if I can like find it. Uh, <laughs> hey, hey, Harry. Yes, sir. Did you know that dolphins can get stoned off the neurotoxin produced by a pufferfish? Oh, that that makes perfect sense. Oh, by the way, it was seventy nine thousand five hundred seventy seven so, times that I invoked Emax in a year. Seventy nine. <laughs> seventy nine thousand. Yes. <laughs> All right. Wait, I, we I were just, not talking I just about wanted you to. I just, I just wanted you to know that, Harry. I, I actually had heard that before. So if you're, if you think that Damn gets it. you off the hook for things that I had never heard or didn't know, um, so you know, I've talked about Oakland and how much I hate it, right? Yes. Oakland is basically the sunfish of of California. <laughs> Woman escapes armed carjacking in Oakland. Now this is obviously in the Oakland Hills up above Oakland. It's nice. It's not a shithole. But it's shithole adjacent, shit so things like adjacent, this happen. Yeah. yeah. Come on now, quit fucking. Oh, around. what? No. Run his car! Ah! Yeah, and that's clearly an older lady, and she just like gets the hell out of there. So if you were in this particular yeah, position, uh, a lot of people just do not do the right thing. We sh I showed that army video on what to do with carjackings and their advice, not Minion's advice, but their advice was uh, if you have to damage your car to get away from these people, because you don't know what they're going to do. I would know. You, it Absolutely. takes a lot of balls to come at somebody who's driving like a three ton weapon. It's, yeah, especially if it's in motion. That's if somebody got out of, of that car power. with a gun coming after me in this situation, I would take out that person coming out of the driver's seat and their door i would push their car off to the side oh, yeah. basically i I'd, I'd pit maneuver them and then me and my broken radiator would drive down that hill as soon dialing as 911 this, the whole time as soon as this frame that we're stopped at right now as soon as this clicked in my uh brain i would be slamming the gas and just plowing through there and getting the hell out because it's oakland and oakland a lot, is because terrible. A, a lot of people during um vehicular what do you call them What's the what's the technical term for it? When you, I don't know which thing you're talking about. My brain's like, good. Or like no, there's homicide. There's there's you know, vehicular manslaughter. No, not manslaughter. When you when you carjack someone, there's like okay, when you carjack someone, or yeah. a, um, most people tend to you know in the unlawfully abscond fight or flight, or with flight sort of like. Response. Yeah, they don't they want to freeze. hurt their car. It's like you need well, to understand freeze, you might so die. They kind of just go, whatever, man, just take, just do whatever. Just they freeze. And it's like, no, that's like the entirely wrong thing you want to do because, like you yeah. said, you don't know what they're going to do to you. If somebody carjacks you, you don't know if it's about property. Well, you don't know what they're going to do. You you don't know. It's you, you have to just, you know, if you've got, if you're basically riding around in a three ton weapon, do what you got to do to save your own life because, yeah. Get out of yeah. There. I, I see this thing and I'm just like, no. I mean, this oh, is another yeah. one of those reasons why you don't 
get too close to people on a road like this there's no reason to be that close and as soon as they slowed down she should have put more distance in. but by yeah. the time she was in this position um it's time to it's time to gtfo yeah the kids say. and whatever collateral damage happens on the way out so be it, it. happens anyway <laughs> screw <laughs> oakland the, the sad part is is that that camera probably couldn't even read the license plate on the other car <laughs> their car would uh not be drivable after i got done with it so this happened in houston skep what do you what do you think of this oh i killed the sound so bungled beef burglary so this guy walks into the market and he's like oh cool i think i'm just gonna get some steaks and stuff and i'm gonna run out and they're like (laughs) what are you doing hey give me that that's all that's give me that cool. oh that's so lame give me that that's and sad. look at this guy they push him out and he's like hey yeah, i'm going back from a beef i was going to abscond with that <laughs> hey hey i was gonna buy that <laughs> can you imagine if if so i guess that doofy looking white dudes in uh in houston are not allowed to just uh shoplift all they want evidently not but uh <laughs> See, as a Californian, I'm not used to this phenomenon where they actually stop you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, right. I'm surprised he wasn't treated a bit more roughly. I guess everybody is uh, getting used to the idea of we're all under the microscope. We're all on camera all the time. We almost are. Yeah. Big Brother. And look at him. He's wearing his Adidas shirt. He's got his sunglasses on. He's not really making much effort to hide his identity. He's not Aladdin. He's just decided I'm just gonna just gonna steal some steaks because you know he he's got a Fuck need. Him. Yeah. Yeah. No fucks to give. Yeah. Just, just go, I, no, go for it. Yeah. Just go. Just get out of here. Well, him just going after that that big that big security guard of color who had at least like seventy pounds of muscle on him. <laughs> him trying to go back in there. It's like, come on. That guy's a scowl. You know, he's 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 got nothing on the other guy. He's got nothing. He's he's just lucky that that guy wasn't an aspiring bouncer or something because um you you would get hurt badly under oh, most yeah. normal circumstances. Well and truly. Anyway. And not, not that I'm like uh advocating what he did or agreeing with what he did, but I am saying I do kind of understand where some of these people who do look a little well off to do uh, just might be uh, a little tired with the state of things and are doing this shit because they think that, well, in a lot of cha- in a lot of uh, examples, they do get away with it. Yeah, I thought this was free now. <laughs> well, more so, you know what, if you're going to s- keep charging me this and, you know, t- start charging me for grocery <laughs> bags and, like, uh, the cost of living and my gas is going through the roof, you know what? I, yeah, I can afford it, but fuck you. <laughs> Well, I love the fact he just went to the meat department, just grabbed like styrofoam, yeah, I mean, just trays of, of steaks, and just said, uh, "Okay, well, I'm out of here. I'm out of here." You ever hear about like the story of uh, the stories where the guy gets fired because he stopped someone from actually shoplifting? In the yeah, company in California out? and yeah, uh, other places, it's like a Lululemon. Lululemon uh, was store. one of them. Yeah. Lowe's did it. I think Walgreens may have done it. Yep. Um, yeah. And yeah. all I th- can think when I hear those stories is, God, I really, I, I don't rob places, but if I did rob places, those would be the first places I hit. Not because I know I'd get away with it, but because they fucking deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> they deserve to get robbed. Eh, nobody deserves to get robbed, but. Lululemon does. Uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. So I have another palate cleanser for you. And I like I like this one a lot. Okay, this one I don't know if you guys have seen this before, but I think this is pretty awesome. So uh, this guy has a channel that is called Construction General, and all that he seems to do is just make tiny versions of of large things. So in this particular instance, uh, he actually makes a small hydroelectric dam. I saw you know. This one. Well, yeah, you've seen That's it, but other cool. normies who aren't in the in the business probably haven't seen it. I mean, he does beautiful work on this thing. He's putting all the forms in shape, you know, and then he's going to, like, pour cement. Look at that. I mean, this is like 
proper engineering, right, Jack? <laughs> this is ah. this is like sort of how it's done. This is how Jack would do it. In fact, that probably is Jack right there. Probably is. Ah. Yeah. I don't see you building any dams, Jack. <laughs> I, for one, think this is pretty cool. <clears throat> I mean, if you have to have oh, a hobby, too. making tiny be. versions of hydro dams oh. seems like a good oh, one. Hell yeah. I'm going to skip ahead. Um, you know, here's the generator. And so he's. So is he using it for anything in particular? Or is it no, just, just to light some lights. He, this is just for fun. This isn't okay. like going to save any salmon or anything like that <laughs> just put the lights out there and then uh, you know start you running water through oh, it so cute this. yeah this that's is very wholesome i think then he's gonna open the open the floodgate i don't know why the uh, video is sort of stuttering so water goes in Starts spinning, then the little little generators up at the top. And now all the little green LEDs have lit up. Now you might think, oh, this is an interesting little one-off, right? But no, he has like a whole bunch of these things where he's built like houses and hydro dams and bridges and all sorts of stuff. There's hours and hours and hours of, of stuff here oh, that you could boy. just use to Is this uh, the guy in the Philippines? Uh Construction General, it doesn't ring a bell. This looks like a Chinese name to me. But the okay, channel's I, name I, I, is Cons there... Construction General. Yeah, yeah, I've seen a couple of channels like this. Uh, one of the, these guys is, uh, that I watch is from the Philippines. He makes some amazing stuff, just like he goes from into nothing. the forest with like, He's from the nothing. Guy with, go, goes in with nothing. And, but a knife. Yeah, but a knife. Uh, like yes. a, a, yeah, that's a, the primitive, cons a, that's the primitive construction channel. Yeah, yeah, but but he 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 then will bring in you know like a roll roll of uh, tin foil and then make like a hydroelectric jet. And pretty generator. soon there's some conspiracy theory. Yeah, this guy's actually using modern materials to to do it from the start. Yeah, yeah and it's it's all tiny now. I mean, I guess if you don't have a hamster that you can make tiny food for, this might be the next best thing. Sorry, I got I, I yeah, forgot what I, that I was running a show. I find this to be completely mesmerizing. Yes, I no, I, I want to like with you. I want to like just, take a trip with Inquisitor and go play a game of Warhammer on it. Well, I'm another just thing. curious as just... I'm just curious as to how like functional these things actually are, because I mean, it, they they seem to have access in both this channel and that. Uh, uh, what 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 was the one you mentioned? The one with the guy with the knife. Uh, they have access to this soil, which you dig down, and it acts almost like brick on the site. I mean, maybe it's 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 partially clay, but I mean, it's like this perfect construction material that I can only imagine would just erode away completely the second it's exposed to water. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, sorry, I, I'm. It's just you know, uh, it's engineer brain just tell me to shut up please no you're fine um so i enjoy well okay so here's one for your engineer brain here's a little geometry for you okay let's say that didn't work well i guess we're not going to do that um <laughs> never mind oh man yeah it's just being it's just being annoying uh i was going to show you some cool uh construction things so we're not going to do that let's see Next thing is, oh, God, I almost don't even want to do this. Oh, well, we're going to do it anyway. But <laughs> do it. Milestone. One patient has become the first in the U.S. to give birth oh. using a uterus transplant outside of a clinical trial. ABC's oh, no. Rhiannon Alley has the no. story. No, no, it's a no. medical milestone in the U.S. For the first yeah. time outside a clinical trial, a uterus transplant recipient has delivered a healthy baby. For us, this was, this is what I feel like I, I knew that I was supposed to do this. When Mal okay, so, so Skip, you know what they have to do to do something like this sort of transplant. Uh, with all of the 
anti-rejection medicines and all the other things. Is this really where you want, like, a human when being you, when you do something like gestating? This, especially, first of all, anything down there, it, it's just a place that grows things. And mm -hmm. if any anything that is irregular grows irregular down there and is devastating for women. A foreign uterus down there? Are you kidding me? Are you joking? They, they don't even know all the, the, the names of all the chemicals that play key roles in, in the things that regulate uh, uh, all the, the processes therein and, and all the links to the you know, various systems, human body, the, the uh, neurological, the circulatory systems, the, the, the way that they... Uh, way that they do their business in the body anyway now that's a vast unknown this this seems like a really terrible idea it's like she wants to have a kid she was born without a uterus okay that's she and her husband terrible. they still have they still have the the other ingredients that are needed to make that, the kid why not a surrogate it's not going to be there for a long time harry why not a surrogate it, why is this necessary yeah, exactly. to do this to this woman Right, so exactly. she can experience childbirth? Well, it's necessary for the ego of the surgeon. A lot of this, I think, is probably... This is a what what is called, we found a suitable patient for your procedure, doctor. <laughs> that's what this is. And I swear to God, that, that, that's how this works. And, and, uh, and uh, so she's celebrated and uh, guaranteed GoFundMe. Anyway, you know that you know where this is going to go, right? I don't even I don't even want to say this, but you know, there's some trans woman out there is going to say, yeah. "I want one of them uteruses too." I was just going to say, and that's why? where this is going to go. Yep. Just um, shove that one in there. I mean, you know, we don't have the pelvic bones for it, but we'll make it work. Yeah, yeah I don't know. I did, I'm not real happy with this bold new world that, uh, or this brave new world that we've come up with sometimes. Yeah. I, I, I do like how it's a healthy baby, but we don't know that. Like Skep was saying, like all the things, all the drugs she she had to take to even just take. Continue to uh, take. I mean, she had to take yeah. drugs to to not just have and, this thing jump out yeah. of her the uterus. Uh, and and also to conceive and everything. Yeah, it's all going to be. Because that's going to go oh, straight through the milk. Yeah. yeah, and her cervix, I guarantee you, was incompetent. I guarantee you they sewed her cervix. Yeah, what 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 about this baby? I mean, is this baby going to be born, you know, without defects of any kind? Mm -hmm. I, I, I really so hope, I really hope that part of all of these things was the fact that you're going to be a you will be uh, under my microscope medical study for the rest of your life just to see what's going to happen. That should be what happens next, right? Yeah. Because you need the life cycle now of this woman um, to see what exactly is going to happen. So these are but then, these important data points. Uh, but then, and, and if they say, well, the same thing is going to happen to your kid, but the kids never signed up for this. That's yeah. a huge breach of their... Personal. Yeah. Here, have some thalidomide. It'll be then the fine. Kid, then the kid dies at eight years old from a congenital heart defect that was undetected. <clears throat> Oops. Yeah. You know what would have That's made this a great a great I'm story, sorry. is if they had taken her pluripotent stem cells, right? Just sure. taken some of her own cells, and convinced yeah. them to form a uterus, and they had essentially grown it in a lab, and then taken her own uterus that she never developed and put it in her. That would be one thing. It's the fact that it's a foreign object inside her that they're trying to have function in this way that makes me just go, oh, my God, there's so many why ways this could go this? wrong. Yeah. And why are we doing this? And and you and you know what the next step after this that they're going to try for is, right? They're going to try putting a uterus in a man. Of course. Or, or, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, why so, not two uteruses? Then you can have babies twice as fast. <laughs> That's See, that's what you call goes, thinking outside the box. <laughs> it's, it's all basically one uh, giant attempt to uh, contradict uh, nature itself. And, and it's it always seems to end disastrously. Okay. <laughs> 
Let's see, where are we relative to the end of the show? Let's see, what do we want to end on? Got any palate cleansers? Oh, we've gone through most of the palate cleansers. Um, <clears throat> no, all we have left is... Uh, oh, well, I have one little thing for you, Scap. It's the Computer Chronicles from KCSM, San Mateo, San Francisco, 1985. Hard disk storage. In the old days of computers, when you talked about mass storage devices, <laughs> you really meant mass storage devices. This 40-inch hard disk drive held mm. about 10 mm. megabytes. It looks that now, bad. I have... A whole 10 megabytes? Yeah, I have the spindle from one of those Ooh. next to my next to my bed. It's good nice. with all the magnets and stuff intact. It's so cool. Anyway, I nice. should just I should take a picture of that and show it to you. Yeah, On this yeah. week's Computer Chronicles, we'll be looking at the newest in mass storage devices. Please join us. I'll skip over the that. The amount of memory we have in a 16-bit machine. That's now that's uh, we go to Kildall, the the deck guy. Strain. Now hard disks, of course, we have the problems of the mechanical devices. Uh, it's bearings, uh, head crashes, things of that sort. Um, so we have to be very to careful to make sure the data is backed up properly, can be restored when those crashes do occur, because you'll start to hear the bearings <laughs> whirl and you know, all sorts of problems. With them. So the problems with the mechanical devices are still there. We're going to take a look at hard disk drives today, and we'll take a look at some of the alternatives, like the Bernoulli box, like tape streamers for backup. We'll begin by looking at an incredible new device that's a hard disk on a card, and it's called the hard card. Yeah, so basically <laughs> that was your um, <laughs> that was your SSD. <laughs> So right. back in 1985, the Bernoulli box. I I had Bernoulli boxes. I was conversant. But Bernoulli don't you want a two megabyte SSD, Skip? No hell yeah. You no, totally want that sort of thing. Kidding me? So I but was where trying. Did, where where go, does the re, sorry? Go ahead, Jack. Where does the retro encabulator fit into the this? retro encabulator? I don't. Um, it's there. <laughs> <laughs> but this is what the disk drive looks like inside, and they say even the three and a half inch uh, versions of it. It literally is a series of platters with uh, a little magnetic reader that goes back and forth. The head crash that he talks about, it used to be that if you were going to move a disk drive, even powered off, you had to actually park it, which would move the, the reading heads into a safe position and lock them in place. So that if you, when you were moving around, if it vibrated, it wouldn't just go boing, 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 boing off the top of the magnetic platter. Right. <laughs> so you had exactly to actually park the damn disk drive. Right. But uh, that many, many, many times. But just imagine all of the people that had to try to sell these things. You go to somebody and say, yeah, I need thousands of dollars to get a 10 megabyte hard drive, but this right. is going to make your business so much better. That's what I did. Yeah. I sold them out of my, the back of my pickup truck. <laughs> Shit, you not the entire computer system. I would, I would, I hauled, I hauled the systems in the back of my pickup truck. I, I sold them first. But, well, uh, yeah. There's a new hard drive technology, uh, not the terrible shingled media stuff that they're working on, but Seagate is looking at putting out 35 terabyte, three and a half inch drives next year. Jeez. And they think they're going to be able to get it up to 50 using this new heat-assisted technology. That's, uh, I wonder how long those are going to last. Yeah, those I was going to say. I'd get, wait, wait for version 1.1. Well, the, the SMR drives, the shingled media ones, that's a terrible technology. Uh, if you read through a lot of the forums for people who do uh, storage stuff, they're all like, these things are pure cancer. Don't put them in any of your arrays if you value really your data. No. Yeah. No. Yeah, Minions of the Zoo does not want to get sued by Seagate. So this is just Harry's yeah. opinion, and uh, I'm going to disavow it if anybody asks me about it. Seagate, uh, Seagate made, uh, remember the STS-50? STS-50. It was a 40 meg hard drive. Uh, um, I remember my drive. first, which was an ST-125, which was a 10 megabyte hard drive. It cost me $1,000. Wow. And I hooked it up to my Atari uh, 512 ST, which I had upgraded That's from 512 to two and a half megabytes of memory. That was hot we shit, were working man. Working on similar. We were. Mine was an unnamed motherboard running a bastardized version of CPM called XCPR. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> which uh, you know was uh, uh, somebody's play toy. Yeah, uh, of an operating system that uh, got published in the in the the hotbed of the, that was 
computer science of 1982 and 1983. Yeah. Well, one <clears throat> one last thing. Let's make fun of the Biden administration for just a uh, just a moment here. Ooh. Uh, no. Oh, shut up. California uses temporary diesel-powered electric truck chargers. So mm. for all of the uh, electric trucks that they're putting in and electric buses, they literally Di- have... Diesel-powered, did you say, Harry? They have diesel generators on trucks that go to where the electric trucks are to power them. All right. This, well this to me, is like hearing about soaking in the Mormons. <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> Is it still really an electric bus if you have to charge it with a diesel generator? It's like, oh, we got rid of the diesel buses. This is really fun. Yeah, the diesel buses, diesel trucks, we got rid of them. Uh, How did you do that? Oh, well, we bought new ones. We got rid of all the diesels. Well, how are you charging them? Oh, well, we have a diesel generator that charges our electric bus and truck. Yeah, and we haul the diesel generator on an electric truck. Uh, Yeah, California Drayage Trucking Companies are running up against a state-mandated deadline of January 1st, 2024, after which any new trucks sold in the state must be zero emissions. With current technology, that means electric, and the state isn't ready for more electric trucks. So, uh, yeah, basically, how are we going to solve the, we don't have enough things to charge it with? Well, we'll just have another truck show up with a diesel generator, and then we'll use that to charge the trucks. Perfect. Problem solved. Your government at work. Uh, this just makes me sad. We are here to help. <laughs> yeah, we are the government and we're here to help. Uh, <laughs> this was a thing that was actually sent to me. Larian employed intimacy coordinators to aid in developing Baldur's Gate's threes sex scenes. First of all, what? <laughs> wait, what? Wait, what? Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, this, w- this was actually sent to me. Uh, wait, there's sex intimacy scenes in Baldur's Gate 3? Oh, wait, wait, wait. So, in- so these are the people who are like on... They, they they basically uh, choreograph like the sex scenes and yeah. stuff like that. It's really cool. There's this girl on uh, YouTube that I just found her in my shorts. Like it started, and I've I I quite like her stuff. She explains how scenes are made, the yep. kind of protection people use. Really cool. I, very interesting mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah, and how they're yeah. not actually having sex because that would be really horrible to try to even film, even if you were going to do that. I, I've seen I think this some of the same con- content, but this is a video game. I'm confused. And wait, so why are there sex scenes in Baldur's Gate to begin with? Not, I mean, I'm, I'm not anti-sex, mind you, but I, I just like there's like what? a really sexy vampire guy that everybody likes. Am, am I the only one who thinks that intimacy intimacy coordinator sounds like the resume version of a fluffer? Yeah, it's like. <laughs> but what about? I don't uh, know. <laughs> but I mean. Because in back in my day, it was just leisure suit Larry, you know, and then you only had you hardly had any pixels. There was not a whole lot going on, and you'd always just sort of fade to black. I'm just like, have video, video games have sex scenes in them? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, which The Witcher actually made it some more collect. mainstream. I've been away for a while, I guess. <laughs> uh, and you know the the RPG games like your Mass Effects and everything had that. But it was very PG, very safe, kind of like it was more. Uh, in, uh, in Witcher, it was the sex scenes are basically like collector's cards. Are, are you able to? Can you catch yeah, them all? Those, those are like actual, like full on, not like hardcore pornography, but they were full on like sex scenes with digital nudity and everything. So, I, I mean, I, somebody's I, gotta, I, somebody's gotta be there to be like, uh, pelvises don't work like that. Why? Boobs don't move like that. Like somebody's got to be there to be like, okay, this is how a body moves, and this is how like, the joint moves. I know moves. this is, uh, I know this is like fantasy, but come on, guys, let's be a little realistic. <laughs> well, I mean, in Grand Theft Auto, you just sort of, you know, fade, pull the the camera back, yeah. and then the the car parks off to the side, and then your health meter goes up, and then that's, that's how it works, right? The, um, the more concerning part about Baldur's Gate sex scenes is that there's one where. And uh, I kid you not, there's uh, this class called a druid, and they are shapeshifters. Yeah, baby. And the one <laughs> the bear, character <laughs> sh- sh- shapeshifts into a bear, and the one your your protagonist main character can have sex with them in bear form. Yeah, Yay. yeah, but, but but that is a fade to black, though, from what I understand. Yeah. That Did- basically, it's like. I mean, listen, yeah, I don't care. But you're like, still it's- kind of pressing the limits of like this is. Beast. 
Alan. Well, to answer to answer chat, um, <laughs> goes back decades, Harry. Where have you been? I've been not playing Baldur's Gate playing apparently or doing any of this sort of thing. Uh, I mean, I play a lot of fighting games and stuff, but they don't have this sort of stuff in it. But people apparently, like people who like uh, Baldur's Gate and stuff, are really pissed off that they they even showcased that scene because it's to get to that scene you actually have to it do like a, a lot of stuff. Yeah, that's why I'm not and really it, like outraged about it. I think it's an actual very good evolution of the genre of a fully immersible immersible role playing game to play it how you want. I'm to. not outraged, I'm... just so you know. I'm just surprised. It's no, like no, no, while I was away, either, what the hell did you do to this place? But yeah, no, no. Thing, games have been getting quite a bit more adult. Uh, mm. And that's not including the adult video games genre, which is an entirely separate genre, where the point is to create uh, interactive pornography. Basically. Well, there you have it. Wow. What a, what a great time. And just think with all the AI rights stuff, news. you know, you'll be able to have Brian Cranston AI, uh, porn, AI porn. So that'll yeah. be good. Actually, before before we sign off, something that was very interesting that a lot of Mark people took Patrick. issue with, the new Secret War Disney movie, uh, a Disney TV show okay. about uh, Nick Fury uh, in that the, the Marvel Universe with the Skrulls and everything. Mm -hmm. They did the intro because the, the they didn't finalize anything, so they did the intro with uh, uh, AI. And I think it looks really good for an intro to a show. But a lot of people on a certain end of the spectrum were very pissed off because they were like, oh, look at this. This is what passes for art these days. And blah, 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 blah. Or just uh, whatever. Yeah. Well, I, I it all sounds pretty, pretty sus to me. <laughs> but okay. I'm excited, though, because the, 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 the I'm possibilities are limitless. I'm happy for you. Yeah. Yeah. Interactive entertainment is like when two pinnacle. AIs really love each other. <laughs> well, when a mommy AI and a daddy AI I, get together and I, love each other very much, Scap. Yes, Jack. I don't, I don't want I don't want video games to feature sex scenes. I just want them to be fun again. I do. Yeah. Well, I mean you I can want, I don't mind fun. it. They're not mutually exclusive, dude. No, Listen, it's, stay, it's, stay away from the al the al adult type ones, or or, no, or it's going not to that, this, <laughs> going to it's the not that I'm It's not that I'm bothered by there being sex scenes in video games. I'm saying pot. that it's Tell a the truth. It's a replacement. It's 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 a replacement for actual gameplay. It's kind of like in when they put, it's like it's like when they put uh it's like when they uh curse excessively in television shows to mm. see more for oh, an like adult the audience. Says, Jack, Jack's yeah, the oldest cool. Jack's the oldest one here. So um <laughs> w why don't we get like chess sets but instead have them be like anime figurines where like the queen is like really hot. Hey, hey. hey. We need like what we need is sexy been chess, chess sets. sets for somebody out of Warhammer figures. No, we want oh. sexy chess sets because chess is boring. Be sexy Warhammer. We need sexy chess from now on. No, I, I'm talking about the millennial kind of writing, you know. Oh, well, we are we can't write an adult story, so we just curse a lot yeah. and act infantile. Yeah, yeah we yeah, ship no, it. That, the people who are complaining that they're not getting paid enough. Yeah. That, that That's what this is to me. It's it's replacing actual storytelling or gameplay with <laughs> something that sounds mature but isn't really. I, well. watch, I watch those special movies for the plot. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I read the magazines for the articles. Well, you know, so we've actually like... done our two hours, and I want to let Skep get his beauty sleep. So uh, do we have anything else quick I from am, everybody? I am falling asleep. I'm so sorry. Oh You're fine. No, we're sorry. Anybody have any final anything? Jack, you tell me something I don't know. You've been trying, God but you've been failing so far. Well, I tried once. I didn't think you were going to bring it up again. Ah, don't worry about it. Next time. Anyway, thank you, it's panel. Thank hot. you, chat. <laughs> this has been Good your night, Saturday folks. Minions. The zoo's closed. Good night, everybody.